Hello. All right, we're in business. Aloha, beautiful souls. I am back. Today's workshop is all about the philosophy of flow. And I love this topic. I actually am finishing the book, The Flow State, right now. And so hopefully this month in June, actually, I'll be completely done. It's already got 80,000 words, so it's a lot. And so today we're going to be talking about the philosophy of flow state and also the 22 universal laws of flow. And I love this topic, and there's so much that can be spoken about by the way, what do you think about my crown? I got this last night at this this fun festival, and I'm like, I like it. It's super fun. Um, anyway, so the philosophy of flow is quite simple, but also I feel like there is, you know, a lot to it in the sense of I've, I've broken it down into 22 universal laws, and each one of them is instrumental to understand how we can live in flow in let's say harmony with the universe is really what that means. The philosophy of flow, it's dates back to the beginning of existence. Like everything is energy. Everything is based on the energy of flow. If you think about it, if you think of the universe, nothing is ever static. Nothing is ever really still. It may feel still, but there's always some very, very tiny movements happening in everything in the universe. So everything is really based around this energy of flow. And at the same time, if there is a block to the flow, we can really feel that. Um, you can leave a comment, let me know. Can you feel it when your flow is blocked or when it's flowing? That's the first indicator, of course, you know. Hey, thank you, Lori. Um, the first indicator is to see like, okay, how do, how do I feel right now? You know, it's really based on a feeling. That's why we call it flow state because it's a state of being more than like some kind of idea. Like it's not like a, a thought, you know, although we can have a thought and the thought, you know, obviously is powerful. But what's more powerful than thoughts is the feelings behind the thoughts. And this is true even if you, you know, you've seen the movie The Secret or something, the law of attraction. Everything comes down to this energy of, you know, the way that something feels is an indication. It's how our soul gives us a message about whether something is resonant or not, whether or something is in alignment or not. And so the more that we can learn to trust these feelings that we have, that's when we can really actually create a better life for ourselves. So everything in the Flow State Institute is based on that idea, is that you know we are intuitively guided by the way that we feel and also by the thoughts that we think. And we're creating our reality with both of those, intentionally or not intentionally. So if we're not intentionally creating our reality, right? Or you know uh, we're just letting life kind of happen, which is also fine and that can happen. You think you can kind of relate it to a ship or a boat on a river or on the ocean, you know? So if you're on a river and you're in a boat, you know, the boat is just kind of like maybe getting smashed into a rock or into the shore or a tree is in the way and it gets smashed into that. So we're just kind of like vicariously bumping into things in life. And by doing that, by living that way, we are not let's say, at cause in our life, whereas we have a choice, right? So the other option is we take our power back and we're like, okay, I noticed that I keep bumping into these big rocks or, you know, like I'm having these major uh, conflicts in life. And so we can look at that and we can make some changes. So that's really how we become the masters of our lives as we look at what's happening and we learn to navigate the waters. But when it comes to flow, when it comes to the philosophy of flow, I've broken it down in the book to 22 universal laws. And today we'll go over a few of them. The first universal law in the book that I detailed is the law of free will. And the reason I put that first, and, and you can think about this for yourself, like why, why would that be a pivotal, essential understanding for life, right? The law of free will. 
But this is the reason. If we don't believe we have free will, if we don't believe that we have any say in or any choice at all in the way that life goes, in the way that our life unfolds, in the way that we create our reality, like if we don't believe that we have any choice in that, then we don't believe in free will. So there's a lot of people like that, actually. Like this has been debated for thousands of years. Like from the beginning of time, everyone's been debating is, is it free will or what they say, destiny, right? Free will or destiny? Destiny or fate is the idea that there is something already planned for your life and that you don't have any say in it because no matter what you do or say or think, you're going to be led to a certain direction and that is your destiny and you have really no say over it, you have no control over it and it just is what it is. So that's one belief. Leave a comment if you believe that. If you feel like there is no real free will and that you're like, yeah, it just seems like life is already just like set up in a certain way and we don't get to choose anything. That's one option. Now, my true belief is that we have both, that you have, it's like 50-50, right? It's like we have free will, but at the same time, there's a destiny at play. So like your soul chose your birth, our souls chose our birth, chose the parents that we had, chose the challenges that we signed up for, because the soul knew that this was the path that would lead to the most great like the greatest growth strengthening of the character the soul evolution so the soul signed up for this path right like just because it knew that this was what it needed at the same time there is what i do believe there is a form of destiny so the destiny is what like guides you right so as we tap into our intuition we can hear more what is the destiny what is the direction to go, right? So that's what that intuitive guiding voice is, is really speaking. It, it's speaking into the, like maybe this whisper, it's speaking to us and it's saying, you know, make that phone call or it's saying, do that yoga teacher training or it's saying, you know, post this thing online or whatever it is, it's guiding. And then that step takes you to the next step and that guidance is part of the bigger destiny at play so but then that that free will is like whether you choose to listen right the free will is you heard the voice but did you do the thing did you make the action did you change your paradigm you know so that's the like dance between free will and destiny and that's what i really believe is that there is both and so we have some comments here Lori says i feel like i am the creator i feel like the divine lives within but then I do have a, des a destiny. So yeah, like exactly. That's what Lori said. And I, and that's what I feel too. It's, it's that you have both. You don't have to think, oh, it's one or the other. Like if you give all of your power away, like if you're like, oh, it's just destiny. And you, you put all your eggs in this one basket, which is you have no power there. The only power is it, it is what it is and it will be what it will be and whatever. Like that kind of feeling, it's not powerful. Like it doesn't make you... Uh, like to me anyway, maybe you might feel differently, but it doesn't feel like you have any say in it, right? So the free will, the law of free will gives us more power. It gives the power back to the individual and to the soul and to you, right? To you. So when you think about yourself and, your, and how powerful you are, think, okay, look at my current circumstances or the circumstances that I was born into. And now let me see in what ways can I make some changes, whether it's in my thoughts, in my words, in my actions, in my energy, in the paradigm that I'm operating within. How can I make these changes? And then from those changes, create a new reality that's more in alignment with my destiny. So then you're like working hand in hand as a creator, as the master of your destiny. That's the other part of it where you say, I'm the master of my destiny. So it's not just like I am, you know, a puppet of this destiny because the puppet energy would be that you have no say in it. It is what it is. You just have to deal with whatever you get, like whatever cards you get, it's just, you have to deal with them. Whereas with taking your power back and actually being 
you know, more like empowered with these decisions, that comes from the energy of free will. So I feel this is an important one, you know, like an important, what I call like universal law, because there's actually millions of dollars that have been invested into research to determine on a scientific level whether there really is a such thing as free will. But the bottom line is we can look at life and we can determine that for ourselves. We don't need necessarily like the $7 million research to let us really feel that. Like you can feel that because when you hear that guiding voice within and you feel you are being guided by a greater power and that greater power is the source of life within you that is one with everything and that you are that. So when you feel that connection to the oneness of existence and you let that guiding voice within guide you to your destiny, then you start to see, wow, there's this dance here. I see the path to my destiny. I'm feeling that guidance from within. Well, at the same time, I'm making these choices and I'm taking these actions and I'm making these changes. And with the small changes, like they say, even if it's 1%, incremental changes will add up tremendously over time. So if you make 1% change every day, you know, then by the end of the year, you're looking at, 365% change, right? So little changes add up, little actions add up, little mind shifts add up, plugging into positive energy and tribe and community. That's why I created the Flow State Institute. We literally created that so that you will have something to plug into, not only as just a friend group and, an, and a high vibe tribe, but also for guidance, for wisdom, for uh, for a certification so you could have a career option. There's lots of things that we have here at the Flow State Institute. But, you know, overall, it's, you know, making those choices to do the disciplined action that you might not want to do, maybe. Maybe it's like, oh, that feels like a lot of work and I'd rather just lay on the couch or, you know, like watch Netflix, which is, you know, a lot of people choose that as their path. And then they look back at the end of their life. And this is something I've really explored for years and years, the end of my life where I'm like, actually, how fascinating that, you know, if you looked back at the end of your life, you're like, did I waste my life? You can ask yourself that even up until this moment, did you waste your life or have you are you excited about every single moment, every choice that you've made? And don't feel bad about it or down on yourself if you're like, yeah, I made some dumb choices and I was lazy. But at the same time, at any moment, that's right here and now, which is free will, we can all change. We can all create a better life. We can all choose a better path. That's our free will. That's the law of free will. And the more that we understand that and live that and choose that, then the rest of it all also makes more sense and you get more alignment in the other ways. So for example, in the, um, the flow state book that I'm writing, so we have, like I said, 22 universal laws. So the first one is the law of free will. So there's different laws, right? So like, let's talk about, for example, uh, one of the laws that comes to mind is the law of harmony. So the law of harmony is so powerful. If you think about nature, nature exists in absolute and perfect harmony, which is why when we're feeling, when we're in nature, we feel so good. You know, who here, leave a comment if you feel so good in nature. Like you just go and if you're by the river or if you're by the ocean or if you're by a tree, you feel and you, feel, you smell the fresh air and you have the breeze and the birds are singing and the flowers. And all of this, or even if it's just some basic nature, whatever you got, but nature, when you go in nature, it transforms your energy immediately because nature is the embodiment of harmony. And that vibration of harmony is contagious. It's contagious in a good way, <laughs> in the best possible way, right? Like if you go in nature, you can't help but become like a match for that frequency if you stay there long enough and you feel very, very good there. And it starts to relieve the stress and you start to feel like yourself again. And you start to feel the oneness of existence and you start to remember the truth of life, which is oneness and love and peace and harmony and all of these beautiful things. And so that's when we are reminded of the truth of life is through nature. So when I say the universal law of harmony, we can really witness it in its most 
perfect and purest form through nature. But then we can embody that in our lives as well. Now, if we look at our lives and we're like, wow, actually my life is not harmonious, you know, or whatever, you know, look at your life and really like assess it, right? Like, is, is my life harmonious? Do I feel harmonious? You know, is my environment harmonious? What is harmonious? Harmonious, think about like uh, the energy of music. When there's harmony, it sounds good. It's beautiful. This energy of harmony is when everything flows together really nicely and it feels good and it feels peaceful, but it feels alive. It feels vibrant. It feels enlivening. And this is the energy of harmony. It's also very inspiring. So in the energy of a harmony, we are inspired, you know, on a regular basis, we are inspired. And that energy of inspiration and beauty is all the energy of flow. And so as we connect with the universal law of harmony, we can start to see that ripple effect into everything that we have going on in our lives. And we see our relationships are, are more in peace, more in flow, right? More in harmony. And we see our relationship to ourself. Instead of self-criticism, we feel love for ourselves. Instead of uh, negative self-talk, we speak to ourselves with kindness and compassion and power and love and grace. And so we have a comment over here. Paulo says, hi, about free will, though it is the most intuitive position regarding our choices on a predominantly deterministic world, it's far from undisputed. There are radical determinism and compatibil uh, compatibilism. <laughs> right, that's what I was saying earlier. In the end of the day, there's a lot of people that don't believe in free will and it's very fascinating. That's why they've invested millions of dollars into uh you know debating whether or not that that the law of free will even exists which i think is really silly to debate but it was important that it was debated for thousands of years because you know once you've debated something for thousands of years first of all it shows that it's something there if you're debating it for thousands of years there's something there right then you got to ask yourself what makes the most sense how can i feel how, which option makes me feel the most empowered and aligned and connected to the universe and you know like which feels better the idea that we have some control in our life or we're just powerless you know just at the very basis of that being the decision that's how i feel you can really see that the law of free will makes a lot of sense to me. So, I mean, some people might say it's not a universal law because it's debatable. But at the same time, people still debate the law of attraction. People still debate the law of oneness. There's people, actually, I met a guy, and he believed that, that um, actually the very core, the essence of the universe was duality, that there was a masculine and a feminine energy that was the basis of all existence. And I was like, well, that's the opposite of the way I feel because at the very essence of existence, and this is another one of the, the universal laws in the flow state book, but at the very essence of existence, I feel that the essence of it is oneness, which means everything is one. And therefore there is no really masculine feminine because those are just paradigms in the duality that we've created in order to understand things better, right? We wanna label things right and wrong, masculine, feminine. We wanna come up with ways that we, our split mind can wrap itself around the magnitude of the pure essence of existence which is oneness, which is that there is no other, that I am you, that you are me, that we are one with everything. We are one with existence, that existence lives, operates and breathes through us. So that's why we are both the creator and that which is being created simultaneously. That is the oneness that I speak about when I speak about existence. So at the, at the end of the day, you know, um we get to choose there's definitely a, a lot of options in the world in terms of belief systems one of the things i've learned over my lifetime is that belief systems can change they can evolve you know 
after I'm going to be 40 in a month, after four decades on this planet, I realized that, you know, paradigms change, beliefs change. But one thing that solidifies more and more over time for me is the knowing, the knowing that there are universal laws, the knowing that we are one with existence, that there is no separation between you and that which created you and the expression of you and that which is observing that expression. It's all one energy. And then the universe and creation split it into, let's say like different sort of uh, expressions of that, which is us, the individuals, so that we could experience it. And that's what the duality is based on. Let's see, someone's asking, what are some good opportunities for financial freedom for star seeds? I'd love a job that fulfills my heart and purpose. Well, that's a great question. That's why I created the Flow State Institute. So the Flow State Institute, everyone who's in the teacher training is basically becoming certified to teach and to understand the philosophy of flow state and also the philosophy of you know yoga. Because in this world, we have a very, very interesting position in the world. What's going on on a global level? Think about this, like out of the lockdown, out of the COVID, what do we have coming out of this? A lot of mental health issues, a lot of people who feel more angry, more depressed, more anxiety, more separation, more division, more anger, you know, all of the really difficult emotions are amplified from the COVID lockdown, amplified. So if you look at statistically, actually statistics show that there is more domestic violence, there's more drug abuse, drug addiction, and suicide, all from the COVID lockdown. It was probably the worst thing that you can ever do to an entire human population is require everyone to stay inside and don't talk to anyone for like a year because it's not healthy. That's not what humans are designed for. Humans are designed for social, like as social creatures. We are predominantly meant to interact with each other. We are not meant to just be uh, you know, like in a cave necessarily like for the rest of our life. That's not what we're here for. So when we realize what we're really here for, then we realize, oh, okay, so we're here to, you know, be a part of this beautiful orchestration of life. So in that sense, so at the Flow State Institute, what we really are doing, what we're learning is how do you help people? First of all, how do you help yourself, right? How do you heal yourself, your mind, your emotions? How do you manage the incessant hurricane of emotion that constantly flows through, right? Do you ever feel that, which is, I mean, personally, that's a part of my path. Like, I feel like I'm a very emotional person. So I felt the storm clouds of emotion so intensely over the course of my life. And if you've ever felt that, leave a comment, let me know if I'm not alone here. But basically the idea that these energies, these emotions, they move through us and sometimes they overtake us. And sometimes it, it doesn't feel good, right? And sometimes, so when it doesn't feel good, when we're caught up in the storms of the emotion, when we're caught up in our mind and we don't know how to get free from that, there is a path that can lead us out of that. And that's what I call flow state yoga. So it's like meditation, it's breath work, it's EFT, it's mantra, it's dance, it's yoga, it's kriyas, it's kundalini, it's tantra, it's uh, ayurveda, it's cleansing, detoxing, fasting, it's healing. That's the path out of the darkness and back to the light. And we have the tools. These are thousands of years old resources available to all of us. And so at the Flow State Institute, what we do is we teach these. We teach these and we allow people, uh, we give that gift to others through the teaching of Flow State. So in the Flow State Institute, that's what we really focus on. So when you're thinking about becoming a teacher or a healer or a life coach through the Flow State Institute, for example, what you really want to consider to yourself is like, what aspect of the spectrum of ways that you can serve humanity 
is the most resonant for your soul? What brings you the most joy and fulfillment out of the spectrum of options? right? Like you can teach yoga, you can teach classes, you can teach workshops, you can teach private clients one-on-one, you could teach retreats, you could travel around the world, you could teach at a corporation or in the school systems, you could teach online, you can create online courses. There's literally endless possibilities as a healer, a a yoga teacher, and a a flow state life coach. And the reason for that is there are almost 8 billion people on the earth right now. And every single human on the planet needs this medicine, this energy medicine to heal the mind, heal the body, heal the emotions, to be able to feel in harmony with life and to be able to maintain that feeling. And that's why it's so pivotal. It's not just one time. You don't just wanna be like, oh, I felt that once and I'm good for life. No, it's like, how do I feel that on the daily? How do I feel that every day? How do I feel it right now? How do I feel that um, even when I'm going through something difficult, how do I get back to that feeling? How do I get back in flow and my flow is blocked? And we have tools for all of those things. So you could become a flow state life coach. And as a flow state teacher, as a yoga teacher, as a healer, then you get to craft how that looks and feels for you as a contributor. And obviously, if you're a part of the Flow State Institute, you also know we have the uh, business training as well. So we we also have these resources that we've created so that we can help you, obviously, to help you to be able to um, like not only learn this for your own self, but how to package it in a way that you can serve humanity and be a contributor That's what I feel. Um, That's what I feel. There's only one option in my mind. (laughs) And so besides for that, you know, in the end of the day, you can keep like tuning into your inner guidance system, of course. So as you tune into your inner guidance system, it will always lead you where you need to go. So if you're guided, you know, and you're being guided in life and you're like, where should I be? Tune in through the meditation, tune into your breath, connect to the voice within and ask these questions. Ask, you know, what is the what is the path within the grand spectrum of all of it that feels so good for me that I feel excited about? And let me know for everybody who's Pamela, Raven, Lori, in terms of uh, how you guys are crafting your Oh, Pamela said, definitely an emotional person. Yes. So those people who are emotional, it's very interesting because being an emotional person is a blessing. You know, it can be difficult, but it's a blessing because what it does is it teaches us how to feel deeply. And feeling is a gift, although it can feel like it's not a gift. It's a blessing because when we can feel deeply, we're also more interconnected with the universe. And then we can also help others. That's how you also call this like an empath, right? How you can help others is by being able to relate to them. And how you can relate to people is by feeling in, tuning in to their energy. So that's a blessing. It makes you an intuitive. You can become psychic as well. Everybody has the power and the ability to become psychic and uh, have other extrasensory powers, whether it's there's um, clairsentience, clairvoyance. Clairvoyance is where you can see the future. Clairsentient is you can feel. Clairaudience is you can hear. You know, um, clairvoyance is the seeing. So each one, it's like there's this sense that you can develop the six senses and you can develop these you can strengthen these and they can become your superpowers like leave a comment if you could have any superpower what would it be let's see Pamela says I'm learning to get in touch with the flow of my emotions yeah good yeah you know like think about this let's say you have this storm like I would get these storms of emotions where it's like all of a sudden a hurricane is coming and you feel, you feel powerless in that because in a hurricane, you're like powerless in a way. Like you're like, what do I do with these huge winds and this intensity? But one of the things I was teaching the other day or I was speaking about is the fact that 
we, you know, if you've ever been in a hurricane, it's very fascinating because you can step outside, you know, when the hurricane's going over your home, there's this huge wind and it's very intense and it's actually kind of scary because it could like blow your home over, you could die. There's a lot of options that could happen. But what happens is at some point, the eye of the storm passes over your where you are. And that's like the calmest place. I remember I was in several hurricanes. One of them went over my house. I walked outside in the middle of this hurricane and I stood in the center of the storm and it was literally the most profound experience because it was the most calm, peaceful, profound, beautiful feeling of just absolute trust. You're like, this is going to pass. You know that old saying, this too shall pass. That's the feeling that I got from that being in the eye of the storm after watching it sort of blow trees over and uh, cause a lot of destruction and everything. But then to step outside in the middle of it and feel the divine perfection of it all and the trust and knowing it's all going to be fine. It's all working out. And so that's another one of the universal laws is this universal law of divine order. And I'm going to speak about that now as well. And I see Pamela says, yes, it will be a superpower. So we can just, before I talk about the universal law of divine order, I want to speak about superpowers because that's what these universal laws give you. They give you a superpower. So for example, if you feel that, for example, that you are that you understand the law of divine order so that everything literally is in divine order. That gives you a superpower. Why? Because it lets you know that, that it's all working out in the best case scenario, right? Like it's all in divine order. Meaning like there is something that's coming from this that is purposeful. It's for the highest good of all. It's for our highest good. It's for the growth of all. It's for my growth. It's for your growth. It's for humanity's evolution. And so if we can see life like that, then we're like, wow, actually, I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for this challenge. I'm grateful for this pain. I'm grateful for the suffering, whatever it is, right? You can see it and you can feel grateful instead of feeling like a victim of it. And the only way to feel that way is to literally understand the law of divine order and trust in that. So if you trust in that, then you're like, okay, so now that I know that literally everything in the universe is happening in divine order for the best good of all, all, not just a few, you know, it can look like that. It can be like, why is it there's a few people on earth that are billionaires and then there's a lot of people not and there's a lot of people suffering. So you could ask this question. Because these are the, the rebuttals, right? This is like, yeah, well, it's easy to say. Everything's in divine order, Dashma. But literally, it's like all these people are suffering and dying. And, and there's this like disparity and um, a lot of destruction. And so that's an important point. You got to look at it and see like, okay, well, if you see that everything's in divine order and you understand the the magnitude of existence this is how you can really stretch your imagination the magnitude of existence looks like this if you think about the universe which is like let's just say we have earth then we have the moon then we have the solar system you have the planets you have jupiter saturn pluto mars mercury venus uranus all the planets the sun is at the center of our solar system and we have this the solar system and and in the when we're on earth we can get confused and we can think we are the center of the universe but if you look at the universe you realize we are not the center of the universe there is so much more going on in the universe than just earth and our human population right so whether you believe in aliens or not leave a comment let me know if you believe in aliens but basically an alien is just any being that exists that doesn't live on earth that's what we're calling an alien which is like all right i mean it's undeniable there's even you know like actually in the cia they've released 
documentation about UFOs and aliens that they are real. It's been verified by the CIA. So if in case anybody had any question, sorry, dude. I mean, it's like an obvious thing. But the point is, but when humans get this ego thing going, we think we are the only thing going on in the universe. And we kind of think we're the center of the universe. And we think our problems are the biggest thing in the universe. And we get stuck in this littleness of our own ego, right? But if you can expand, if we can expand outside of our own mind, outside of our own planet even, outside of even our solar system, into the magnitude. I mean, it's infinitely, massively huge. So it's almost, it's hard to even describe the magnitude of existence. The universe is just such a, you know, it's huge. So the idea that, that any of that is chaos is an interesting paradigm because of the idea that we operate in an organized chaos. Think about this. Have you ever been laying outside and you look up at the sky and you see a shooting star? Or you see an asteroid, right? These things happen. You know, it's just like this. You look at the sky, shooting star, asteroids, or even whatever. Like um, the, 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 you can sometimes see Venus or you can see other planets. You know, if you have a telescope, you can even see as far as maybe Jupiter. And uh, another bigger plan. <laughs> but anyway, the point is this, that we got to see outside of our limited construct of reality to the bigger picture. Now, when we see the bigger picture and we see, let's say an asteroid is flying through the universe and hits a star. This happens, I'm sure, every day. We don't know about it because it's so far away and we don't see it. But let's say it does happen, because actually a lot of people have been talking about perhaps, you know, this is in quantum physics, a lot of people talk about this, but also in physics, like even in NASA, you know, they talk about it. So it's like, what if an asteroid hit our planet? It would cause a lot of destruction. Like they say that that's how all the dinosaurs died, right? A big asteroid hit the planet. This is one theory. And that all the dinosaurs died. So this is a very real thing. But let's just say, for example, that we will look back on that incidence when an asteroid flew through the universe and hit Earth and killed all the dinosaurs. If we will look at that and say, that is fucked up. I can't believe that asteroid killed all the dinosaurs. We would be in a limited construct. That paradigm is limited because it was to imagine that the dinosaurs needed to or were meant to exist forever on earth and they weren't they weren't obviously they went extinct and it was just the way that it needed to happen and then the evolution of the universe evolution of this planet happened and then from that uh earth continued to evolve and then humans came on board right so if you look at the evolution of that then you can see everything's in divine and perfect order even when it appears to be chaos and I would say even, especially when it appears to be chaos, we call this organized chaos because the organized chaos is happening right now on the planet. COVID, lockdown, all this crazy stuff, um, even climate change, right? These things are huge, but at the same time, it's an organized chaos. Why do I say organized? It's organized because the universe actually is in divine order and there is a plan we call this a destiny. There is a destiny for our planet. There is a destiny for humanity. There is a destiny for your life. And so all of this is actually, you know, something that we can tune into. And when we align with this truth, with the universal law of divine order, then we can say, ah, in divine order, there is organized chaos and there is crazy shit that happens. But the divine order is the peace that we can feel as we align with the truth of divine order instead of getting caught up in the agony of wishing it was different. So when we wish it was different, let's say we're like, oh, it shouldn't be this way. And we're like struggling and suffering because we're like, we should wish it was a different way. That's when we suffer because we have this attachment to the way that we think it should be. We have an attachment to the way that we feel it should be. And by virtue of that, 
we are suffering because we want it to be a way, some way that it is not. And when we, when you want life to be different than it is without being able to do something about it, like right now, we can't do anything about COVID as a planetary uh, situation, but we can do something about the way we respond to it. We can do something about the way we feel on our daily basis. And that's what the Flow State Institute's really all about. It's like, no matter what's going on in the organized chaos of the universe, of our planet, of humanity, that we have tools, we have resources, we can master our mind, we can master our emotions, we can meditate, breathe, dance, uh, and get out of that stuck feeling that we're powerless. And we can come back into our empowered feeling that, you know, we can choose our reality at every given moment and we have that choice and as a flow state teacher life coach or healer you can help others through that as well and a lot of people are struggling so this is something that everybody in the world actually needs let's see pamela says it seems as though there has to be life other than this other than us in the entire universe yeah i mean for sure like i said even the um cia i mean the cia has released documentation of the of the presence of aliens and UFOs. So, I mean, depends on what you believe in, but beliefs are always changing anyway. Let's see, Lori says, haha, I just manifested seeing a spaceship. Totally cool. <laughs> You're so funny. Or I knew I was gonna see it right before I say it or something, I don't know, I've always believed. Yeah, that's so cool. I would say, you know, because in the sense, I think sometimes our minds are programmed to think that there is no, no spaceship. So we might see something and, and we don't know what it is. And so we don't even know it's a spaceship. Whereas if your mind is attuned and believes already that aliens exist, that UFOs are real. So if you already believe all that and know all that, then, then what happens is, you're more receptive to it. It's the same thing with everything. Like if you, uh, if you feel like if you believe in the divine presence, let's just say you believe in angels or you believe in that the, the source of life loves you, unconditionally supports you in every way. If you really, really believe that and see that and feel that, you will witness evidence of it in your life. But here's the interesting thing. If you believe the absence, if you believe the opposite of that, then the mind is so powerful, it will create evidence of whatever you believe. So a lot of people are like, well, I don't believe in this and this. And then all of a sudden they're seeing evidence that supports their belief and they're feeling confirmed of that. Till the end of the day, we all live in a subjective reality. It's based on our beliefs, but I invite you into the conversation that, that our beliefs are creating our reality. So as we choose beliefs that make us feel more liberated, that make us feel more free, that in itself is the key. That in itself is the key to living a liberated life. Choosing beliefs that make you feel better instead of make you feel fear, make you feel doubt, make you feel stuck, make you feel powerless. If your beliefs make you feel powerless, it's time for some new beliefs. Examine all your beliefs every day and discard any of them that are not serving, that are not elevating your vibration, that don't make you feel good. That is one of the keys to living your best life is to truly just literally continuously discard old belief systems that don't serve your greatest evolution. And I'll tell you, who here, leave a comment, who here has ever believed something and then later changed your belief? Okay, I know I have. Like, uh, oh, I have somebody's comment. Last night after meditating about who I was, a song on Spotify was on called Being of Light. And I was walking home from the park and I saw a bright flash in the sky right above me. Oh, I love that. That's beautiful. Yeah, I love that. You know, because that's right. You ask and you receive. So it's like, you know, she asked, what is, you know, what is the truth of who I am? And boom, being of light. 
exactly because we're all beings of light so as we're confirmed in that then we can choose to embody that further and embodiment is the key so it's not just like oh yeah i feel you know i think that like if you have a cognitive like cognitive means it's in your mind like a belief that's just in your mind but it's not in the embodied meaning you believe you're a being of light but you act like an asshole there's not an embodiment even if you believe it it's not embodied so you have to take the belief out of the mind and bring it into the body into the experience of life and that's how we evolve that's how we truly live into our highest potential let's see raven says yes literally all the time uh which one all the time what raven um that you change your beliefs is that what you mean yeah because oh yeah yeah so i i think back just to give an example of myself like as you think back about your beliefs i mean really here's an example i remember when i was i think i was between high school and college okay so we're talking over 20 years ago but when i was in high school and college i literally used to believe that because i was drinking alcohol like every day and i was a partier you know so i was doing a lot of that and i used to believe that i had a balanced life because i was like well i'm drinking alcohol like every day but i work out like two hours a day and i eat really healthy so i have like balance and i used to talk myself into the belief that that was balance that you know they actually have a name for it in modern society, they call that detox retox. It's like I drink alcohol and then I go to Bikram yoga and I sweat it out. And I think that that's balance. So there's different beliefs, right? And then as I evolved, I was like, oh, no, actually, alcohol is a poison and it's a toxin. So as I'm ingesting that every day, it doesn't matter how much spinach or green juice I'm drinking it doesn't really counterbalance poison that I'm bringing in, right? So this idea that we're balanced because we're bringing in, you know, like toxins, but then we're balancing it with green juice. It's not really the truth, right? So as I evolved in my consciousness, I was like, oh, yeah, that's not really balanced. You know, what would be really balanced to me Let's see, Pamela says, I used to do the same thing with alcohol and Bikram. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people do that. It's very, very common. So it's funny because it's like, I don't put that down because it's like one stage on the evolution of the path of consciousness, right? You, you can't blame. It's like a baby. Like you see, when you see a baby crawling, you don't kick the baby and say, get up and walk, idiot. You go, oh yeah, that's the stage that the baby's at. It's in the crawling stage. So that's it. And you're like, wow, good job for crawling. You know, and then when the baby gets older, it starts walking. And then you're like, yeah, good job for walking. Then all of a sudden the baby's running around dancing. And you're like, wow, look at this baby. It's on fire. Woo. And that's us. You know, we're like that baby. It's like detox, retox, drinking alcohol every day, doing drugs every day, and um, and then balancing that with yoga or juice, green juice, you know, <laughs> or whatever, you know, you're doing. And then that you have this detox, retox, and you feel like, yeah, I have a balanced life. And you think, yeah, this is what Buddha meant by the middle way. No. Buddha was not saying detox, retox as the middle way. <laughs> you know? but, but when I was living like that, I really talked myself into believing that. So that's what I'm talking about. Beliefs are very interesting because when you're in a belief, and you're really invested into it, you can talk yourself into anything. A belief is very interesting. But then at the same time, you can create a new belief. So with the new belief, the old belief must be shed, right? As I, as I created the new belief, which to me was the realization that alcohol is actually a toxin. And so as I bring it in, it's not good for the liver, it's not good for your skin, it's not good for your brain, it's not good for any of your organs. It's, it's actually not good for anything in your physical health, um, unless it's like a glass of wine with, you know, very, very rarely, or like, you know, not like every day drinking, you know, vodka and tequila, you know, but 
I used to be really into margaritas. I mean, just to be honest. So anyway, the point is this, as you change the beliefs and you start to realize more truth, then the old beliefs are shedding away. It's like we shed our skin. Every time we get in the shower, you shed a layer of skin. Every time you wash your face, you shed a layer of skin. This is the, the, the evolutionary process. We are like a snake. We just continuously shed old layers, old beliefs, old paradigms. The old self is dying all the time. But here's the, here's the key. A lot of people hold on to that old dying self and that's called stagnation. That's when you don't grow. That's when you don't evolve. When you hold on to the old self, it's stagnation. And we also call that a plateau. So the plateau is you got this far and then you didn't grow anymore. You see that a lot. Leave a comment if you know anybody or even if you yourself feel like you might be at a plateau or anything like that. Because it's very interesting when you see the big picture you know, of, the, of, the, of existence and you're like, wow, I'm stuck. That's what a plateau is. It's like, okay, I'm stuck. There's no growth happening. I see this. Where are the changes necessary to get me past this? And in, in the spiritual community, they call it to quantum jumping. How do I get to the next level? How do I get to the next timeline? It's called in the more modern communication style, but basically it's the same thing. It's like, how do I get to that next timeline? How do I get to that next level of life? And the way to get there is changing your paradigms, changing your thoughts, changing your beliefs, changing your actions. And you can't get there from here. You can't get there from doing the same old shit over and over and over. There's an actual saying, it's like, you, you keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. This is the definition of insanity. So you got to change these things, change the little things, and then watch the big picture change. And some people do it like overnight and it's a rocket ship. It's like cold turkey, boom. And some people it's gradual, right? Who here's a cold turkey person and who here's a gradual change person? I, I remember when I quit drinking, it was a cold turkey decision. I was like, you know what? I'm quitting, boom. And I didn't drink again for like four years. And it was the best thing that I ever did. I was 21 years old. And it's interesting because most people just start drinking at 21. <laughs> I had already been drinking my whole life and I was like, I'm done, 21, it's over. I'm done with this. Um, let's see, Lori said, I literally this morning looked up the Bikram studio to see if they're open. I'm craving some hot yoga, not alcohol. Then I'm looking to sweat, but cleaning up my diet right now and just craving a new class since I haven't even been to a local studio where I live since I moved here. Yeah, cold turkey. Yeah, you know, so that's a good, that's a good example, Lori. I think a lot of people are craving this, you know, classes. It's not that, you know, that's not uncommon at all right now. I think we're craving community, people are craving connection, craving classes, craving guidance. That's why being a flow state teacher is also a great thing because literally people are craving to be a part of that. They're craving to come to your class. They're craving to have that connection, that guidance, that loving support, that community, that tribe. So you can be the leader of that or you can go participate in other people's um, organized classes, or you can do both. Let's see, Lori said, I, I wouldn't mind teaching a warm class of flow. You should, you definitely should. You should definitely do that, Lori. You've been, you know, you're definitely skilled enough and you are ready for that. I encourage you, do it. You got this. Um, let's see, we got some comments. What do you think of tarot and forms of divination? The tower card, the death card relating to transformation in life. Um, cold turkey for you, bloopity. Um, yeah, here's my thing about tarot cards, divination. Um, you know, I really think that it's good. Like, for example, I spent the last 15 years, for example, or more, uh, you know, I like tarot cards. Sometimes they give you guidance. So you pull out a card and you're like, ah, that's just the message I needed today. That why it works, to tell you the truth, I really believe is because whatever message you get is probably going to somehow be relevant because the way that our paradigm works, our paradigm is, is created by association. So for example, like he's talking about getting the tarot card or the death card. 
that's always relevant, right? So let's say you get the death card. What that usually means is something is dying and something is being born now. But if you think about what I just said, we're always shedding our skin. So every moment of our life as a human, we are in this process like a snake, molting, shedding, and that is always happening, whether it's getting rid of old friends, getting new friends, getting rid of old ways of being, thinking, doing, living, breathing, beliefs, patterns, habits, and developing new, or whether it's any other aspect of life, that there's always this process of death and rebirth. So if you pull a card of tarot and it says that, and you're like, wow, that's so accurate because it's exactly what I'm experiencing. So it can be really, really good because it just is that reminder. But at the same time, any card you could have pulled would have been relevant. Like maybe if you would have pulled the card that says, you need to go outside and be in nature. And you're like, oh my God, that's exactly what I needed to hear. Because at the end of the day, you do need to go outside every single day and be in nature. So there's a lot of times the tarot cards are like very just universally relevant. So it's just really like pulling them helps us to have that reminder in that moment. It's like having a friend give you a little word of advice or a little wisdom, a little guidance. And it's nice to have that. And the tarot card is so cool because then you can just pull it and you got one right there. You don't need to have a friend. I mean, it's good to have friends, of course, but you don't need to have anybody present with you in order to get that experience, to get that guidance, to get that little nugget of wisdom that helps you. Lori says, I love tarot. I need a new deck or to create my own. Yeah, I'm actually um, creating my own deck for the flow state. And it's really exciting. This beautiful artist friend of mine is going to do the art for it. So it's all it's all coming together. I'm excited. It's going to have uh, that deck is going to have 22, uh, the 22 universal laws. So and then there will also be other things in there like um, goddesses and different energy uh, reminders. But basically, 22 universal laws. So like maybe one day you pull the law of abundance and you're like, that's right. And it's the reminder that you need that day and uh, to align with the universal law of abundance and to remember that everything is literally abundance. So that's another one of the universal laws in the flow state book and in the flow state teaching, the law of abundance. What does it really mean, the law of abundance? It means that actually the universe is infinitely abundant. So the more that we tune into and align with that energy in the universe, the actual abundance of the universe, we can kind of borrow that energy, let's say, you know, as you align with it, it comes into you, it becomes you, you become an extension of that. And then you realize, ah, I am abundance. And then you feel the abundance. And then you feel the overflow and you're guided to act abundantly and to be living in an abundance consciousness. So the abundance consciousness is like to be giving, to be generous, to know that you are, you are so abundant, you have more than enough to give. And that energy of that is so powerful. What are you drinking? This is a green juice. It actually is a mix. Green juice with apple cider vinegar and aloe. It's a morning drink that I like. It's not that tasty. <laughs> but it's good for you. Yeah, a lot of people ask me about apple cider vinegar, honestly. Um, and so I just mentioned apple cider vinegar is interesting because it does alkalinize your system. So when you have an alkaline system, it's less uh, stress and actually alkaline is the environment cancer and sickness cannot thrive in an alkaline system. So it's very important to keep your system alkaline. You know, so doing that, it's important. You don't need to have it all the time. You know, just like a few, like a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar with water and lemon and aloe. It's a little and it's enough. You don't need like a cup a day or anything like that. Tiny amounts is really good. Do you know about Indian meditation techniques? Of course. I teach yoga and meditation. And okay, so we're going to continue on. So the universal law of abundance is 
the foundation of having an abundant life is literally like acting from these philosophies. So this is important in terms of how we interact with money, but also with energy, with everything in life. Like I remember this this guy that I knew, he was, he was actually very, um, like financially he was rich, but he was very stingy with his things. And it was like so interesting because I was like, you have so much. And he didn't want to share. For example, we had fruit. He had bought a bowl of fruit and he didn't want to share it. And I was like, like, that's the worst. You know, like you want to, like if you have a bowl of fruit, just share it. Because at the end of the day, when you need some fruit, someone's going to give you their fruit too. That's how karma works. You, you know, you give and you receive, and this is energy. That's what I really think is important. So as we start to see, as you, you know, you get what you receive, or like, as you give, so shall you receive. So if you give money to people, or you spend money, you keep the circulation of, a, uh, of that energy flowing, then you can also see it coming back. And the same thing with energy. Like as you give your energy, you feel a lot more energy. And the same thing with your time. As you give your time, you notice you have a plentitude of time. So, you know, it's super important. We have a comment over here that says, Al, uh, Izzy, what is one morning routine you suggest? I have a video on YouTube if you want to watch it. It's called My Miracle Morning Routine. And I also have a whole series of this in the flow state yoga teacher training online it's called uh the miracle morning routine i highly encourage it you know so there's so many beautiful uh ways that we can tune into the power of the universe so another one another one of the universal laws we can talk about today is the universal law like i was just saying the universal law of karma which is tied into the universal law of giving and receiving or cause and effect and if you really want to learn about this topic Sadhguru has a whole book he just released called karma and it's such an important universal law i think there's a lot of ambiguity and confusion around the law of karma because it's like okay what's really karma you know as i i do something how come some people they kill somebody and they don't get killed or, you know, so you can question it because you see in certain instances, it doesn't have an instant effect. But the truth is things always come back. Always. Maybe it's going to take time. Maybe it wasn't their time, but they're going to see if you're, oh, good. if you're hurting people, if you're stealing from people, if you're killing people, there's going to be a lot of pain coming back to you. It is what it is. And sometimes, you know, maybe it's not that you hurt people, but maybe we need to learn these energies so that we can be more compassionate. So for example, if you find yourself struggling and you're like, what did I do to deserve this suffering? Did you ever ask yourself that question? I know I did as I have suffered in this life, I was like, what did I do to deserve that level of suffering? And the, and the um, universal law of karma at first didn't really make me feel better because I was like, okay, so basically I must have done something really bad in a past life, right? <laughs> you start to think about it, you're like, what did I do? But so it's, it's not always that, like, for example, let's say i'll speak about my own experience like let's say when i got in this car accident i got hit by a car when i was 18 and it damaged my spine now if i looked at that i said wow did i hit someone in a past life in a car and damage their spine right that could be a question like you could think that way because that would be the rational way to see it but actually, what it did was it led me to my destiny. It led me to my dharma, which is my purpose of life as a yoga teacher, because I was able to find the healing through yoga for that 
uh, scoliosis. And then through that healing of my spine, I was able to heal millions of other people with yoga. So like the actual karma of it wasn't perhaps that I hit someone in a past life and hurt their spine. It doesn't have to be the exact like mirror of the thing. It's just the energy that you come away from it with. So for me, the energy that I came away from it was, was that, wow, I found my destiny. It led me, the pain of that led me to my purpose. It led me to be of my greatest service to humanity. It led me to my destiny. So what an interesting karma, right? Instead of thinking I'm a victim, I got hit by a car. Instead, I was like, what a blessing. That's why that needed to happen. You see the difference? Let's see. Yeah, good to see you all guys. I'm so happy to be here with you. Let's see. Yuri, Lori says, I used to drink all the time. Oh, that was the, the apple cider vinegar. So yeah, you know, you can kind of contemplate this, but in the end of the day, the, the actual topic of karma is very extensive. And I think that there's very, like a lot of nuances there. That's why I encourage. Yeah, 11, 11. 11, 11, my loves. Make a wish for show. <laughs> I'll put that on both. 11. 11. Boop, boop, boop. Let's make a wish for humanity. We send loving, healing energy to all beings in this planet and beyond this planet into all of existence. We give them love. We give them compassion. And we, we pray that they have everything that they need, that they have love, that they have shelter, food, water, and the basic necessities of life, but especially joy in their hearts and peace in their minds and lives. And we send this loving, healing, compassionate energy from our hearts out to all beings in the universe. And we trust that they feel that in this moment. And that feeling is so deeply, deeply embedded into the fiber of their beingness that with time, they become their greatest selves by virtue of having experienced our love right here in this moment. And so it is. And so it is. I like to pray for humanity every day. This is actually one of the things that, I mean, Buddha was really the, the leader of this. <laughs> There's a, a form of meditation that we do where um, you, you just literally send loving compassion. Loving compassion and kindness, kindness out to all beings and and you know you just feel that love in your heart and you send that to every being in the planet in the universe and you just send that there's no conditions attached to it you're not like i'm sending this but i'm getting something for it. there's nothing that you have like there's no agenda it's just i send the loving compassion to all beings because i know we are one. So as I send loving compassion to all beings, I send it to myself. Right? I send it to myself. And as you send this loving compassion into yourself, this is the path of self-love. So actually, that's another one of the universal laws in the flow state book, which is the universal law of unconditional love. Unconditional love is so powerful. And this also, I have another different one, the universal law of gratitude. So these two kind of go little hand in hand, love and gratitude, but they're different in their own unique ways, right? So love is to say like, okay, if we really love people, if we love somebody, unconditional love says no matter what, no matter what. So that's why I love to practice unconditional love for humanity because I'm like, okay, if I can love a stranger on the other side of the planet that I don't know, then of course I can love somebody right in front of me, even if they're being mean or like losing their mind, you know? It doesn't mean that you need to have them in your life, you know, but you still love them. You can love somebody from a distance. We can love somebody despite all of their flaws and the way that we do that is by seeing, I am also flawed, imperfect, 
and yet fully perfect as I am. So I love myself. So of course I'm gonna love you because you're flawed, I'm flawed. And yet in the divine order of life, we are perfect. We are perfect in our flaws. Yeah, that's so nice. I pray for humanity after practicing yoga in the morning. Oh, I love that. Sending love to all of humanity. Good, thank you. Yeah, I really believe in the, they call it the Maharishi effect, the idea that we can get enough people all attuned to the same vibration, which is this higher vibration of love. You know, the actual frequency of love is one of the highest frequencies, one of the highest vibrations that that in existence, right? So if we tune into that, we're tuning into the, one of the highest frequencies, the highest vibration in the universe. And by doing that, we are raising our vibration. So sending love to humanity and to all of existence is a way to raise your vibration, it is a way to like make yourself actually feel better. To give is very nourishing for the soul. To give unconditionally, especially to give unconditional love is very nourishing to the soul. And so as we do that, we definitely create space for more of that to come back into our lives as well. And that's the magic. That's the power that that full circle effect, we could call it full circle effect is where we, we send out a message, we send out energy, we put out the intention, the pure loving awareness of the intention. And we just send it out and we let it go. We don't attach ourselves to it. We don't attach ourselves to a response to it even. We do it because we love it. We do it because it feels good. And then we let it go and we keep moving on. And this is the cycle of life that is so nourishing for the soul. I think a lot of people are looking for this kind of um, answer, right? Like the answer to life, which is like, okay, um, I'm doing all this work or I'm, I'm like putting out all these good energy, yet when's it coming back? Like this kind of expectation that that there's this reward, right? And so that is very nice, you know, like it's super important to have like, you know, like your energy to be uh, acknowledged and um, recognized and rewarded. Those are good. But the attachment to that is what blocks it. So it's like if we're like, I put out all this good stuff and nothing good came from it. And then you're like attached to it, you're upset about it. You're blocking the flow of the miracle. You're blocking the flow of the reciprocity. You're blocking the flow of the abundance. So these are like aspects of this unconditional love. It's where we put something out with unconditional love and we just trust that the energy of that is enough. We don't have to do more, be more, uh, try harder, nothing. You've done it all. You're great. Trust that. Trust that the universal laws are working. Trust that everything is coming back to you that you have put out both good and bad, whatever. Like if you've been hurting people, trust us coming back. If you've been loving people and giving, giving to people and being a light in the world, trust that is coming back. If you've been supporting people and helping others and, and being that uh, supportive energy in the world, trust that is coming back. And you can start to see how powerful you are. How powerful you are. Just feel that for a second. Tune in, take a deep breath. Reach your uh, reach your arms to the sky <laughs> and just feel the power that you have. And know that everything comes full circle. So if you've been waiting for the reward or like the harvest of all the seeds you've planted or the hard work that you've invested into whatever you're creating for your life, just trust and know all coming and even if let's say it was for example uh you know many years like it could be many years and you're like man many years i'm working towards this goal why is it taking so long you know you got to trust that there's a divine order to the timing of life 
And we even have a word for that is divine and perfect timing. Divine and perfect timing, meaning that there is a definite plan and the perfection of the timing of it, of every single piece of it, whether it has to do with when you write your first book or you have your first child or you get married or you move or, you know, all of these pieces to the puzzle of life, they start to make more sense as we learn to trust, let go, and that unconditional love. And like the other one I said, the universal law of gratitude, which is just being appreciative for what is creates more of that to come through. So if you're like, wow, I'm so happy. I have a couple of amazing friends. I have a, a beautiful family, whatever you got, you know, just finding that joy and that appreciation for what you do have and trusting with a hundred percent certainty. 100% certain, trusting that you are being provided for, trusting that you are being supported and that your destiny is unfolding in absolute perfect timing, trusting. Does anybody have any questions? Pamela, that's so sweet. This trusting is very encouraging. Oh, good, yeah. You know, it's fascinating. Like, I think that for me, one of the biggest, uh, I think, learnings of my life has been to learn the energy of trust. You know, it's like, even still, I'm working with it. It's a lifelong process. Um, thank you. I needed that. I love you. Oh, you're welcome. So happy to hear that. Um, what was I? Oh, yeah. So just learning the energy of trust is so fascinating because like the world will give you a million reasons why you shouldn't trust, right? You see kind of lots of things that seem like you can't trust, right? You see the government doing weird stuff. You see people doing weird stuff. You see all this prejudice. You see all this weird stuff going on. And you're like, hmm, how can you trust anything in this world? It's all weird. And then the true trusting, it has nothing to do with outside. Nothing outside of us is what I'm talking about when it comes to trust. Oh, thank you, Herc. Yeah, nothing outside of us is what I'm talking about with trust. What I'm talking about is trusting yourself inside, your inner guidance source of life. That's the trust I'm talking about. Not like trust the government or trust this person. Yeah, you know, you'll be guided if someone's trustworthy or not. You'll be guided if, you know, to go where the people are that need your trust. So just trust that. <laughs> it's a lifelong journey sometimes, but trust it. And then you can see how that energy of trust, the energy of uh of gratitude, being grateful for the things that are happening in your life, even the challenges, like I said earlier, even when things are hard, being like, wow, thank you, life. Thank you for giving me this hard experience because now, you know what? Now I am able to become stronger, more empowered. I can really feel uh, connected to the source of life in a deeper way. So you have all of this blessing that comes out of that pain or challenge that you go through. And that's really what it comes down to. Let's see, I keep having dreams that I'm in Maui. I had lived a life there. I felt the aloha spirit by the mention of the island alone. I would love to start something there. Yeah, I lived in Maui for a while. I like Maui a lot. Maui is so beautiful. It really has amazing, amazing energy oh the only issue i have with maui is that it's it's literally like there's nobody there i mean there's just very few people so i was feeling like i i was missing people but the actual land and the magic and the energy of hawaii is magnificent i encourage you to go if you can i'll probably still do some trainings there okay we're gonna take a 10 minute break 
And we're going to come back for the second half of this workshop. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the chat and the comments. And we'll be back in 10 minutes. Let's see, right now it's 11.25. So it's 12, I mean 11.35. I'll see you back here in just a minute.
All right, my beautiful friends, we're back. All right, so the second half of this workshop is all about, we're still talking about the flow state, we're still talking about the 22 universal laws of flow. And if you have any other questions, you can always post them in the comments. Like I said, I like to hear from you. What's your favorite universal law so far? We've already talked, we've talked about the universal law of uh, free will. We talked about great, uh, let's see, we talked about free will, harmony, unconditional love, the law of perfect order. We talked a little bit about the law of karma and the law of oneness. So those are a few of them. And we can talk a little bit more about some other ones. One of the ones I really like to talk about and that I teach a lot about is the law of gratitude. If you've ever done the, the thank you song with me, I actually have a video on YouTube about that, but I have it on um, in the teacher training. We have this whole uh, music series of different mantras and stuff. And one of my favorites in the whole world of all time, it's called, it's a song, it's called Thank You for This Day. So it's like, Thank you. I want to say thank you. Mm, mm, thank you. Mm, thank you. I'm so grateful. So grateful. I'm so grateful. I want to say thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This beautiful, this beautiful, this beautiful day. This beautiful, this beautiful, this beautiful day. And the whole song is all about thank you. And I think it's just such an important and powerful song. Like children should be learning this kind of song. You know, just like to express this feeling and this energy of gratitude just for the simple thing. Like, thank you for the sun. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this life. Thank you for my body. Thank you for this drink to drink, this green juice. Thank you for water. Thank you for simple stuff. Doesn't have to be, thank you for the million dollars in my bank or thank you for whatever. It's, it doesn't have to be something big, anything. Little things especially start with thank you. And then living, yeah, Lori says, I love being in gratitude. And so just living, breathing and being gratitude, being in gratitude. And then that energy, Actually, gratitude is on the same frequency as love. So as we're in the frequency of gratitude and we say thank you and we give gratitude, we give thanks for all that is, then we can create more beautiful things like more blessings, more abundance, more flow in our lives. That's why gratitude is one of the key, key elements, like the key universal laws of flow is that as you feel more grateful, you get more things to be grateful for. Right? If you're grateful for your friends, you're going to have more beautiful friends and more beautiful experiences with your friends. So it's just like a, a cycle of life that's perpetual. And it's a beautiful thing. Because when you learn how everything goes full circle, and the more that you are grateful, the more you have to be grateful for, and that whole thing, then you really start to say, well, actually, I'm going to practice this as a practice. And not just like when I think about it, but just daily, like a reminder. First thing in the morning, if you can, or right before bed, just say your prayers, say, your, say, say everything that you're grateful for. Feel it, though. That's the difference. You can't just say it. Thank you. Like if you say thank you, but you don't feel it. I really not, like I'm grateful, but you're not like I'm grateful. Wow. Yes. There's a feeling to it and it's an energy. And if you don't feel it, then don't even bother, right? Like why go through the motions of life? Going through the motions of life is a waste of life. But even worse than that, it doesn't get you any results, right? Like if you're looking to have, like create a result with your energy and you're like, yeah, actually, you know, like I want to create more flow. Well, if you put out the vibration of, of gratitude, but you put it out like, thank you. You're going to get that same melancholy one dimensional energy coming back. And so always feel it, feel it deeply, feel it in your heart and come from that true authentic feeling place. 
And then when you feel it, you're going to see the flow. All right. Leave a comment if you've ever had this experience where you've been been grateful or you've expressed expressed the feelings of gratitude and appreciation for life or for anything. And then you noticed more beautiful things coming, you know, and you can start to see these are very uh, they they're like immediate. Sometimes you can get that response from the universe immediately. And it's that confirmation that you're on the right path. Let's see, Azure, what deities are best to connect with to increase gratitude and love? Uh, what mantra or chanting? You know, it's just, like I said, I would just do like what I just said, just thank you. Like you don't need to go connecting with anything other than that. The, the oneness of existence is pure, pure source energy. So anything other than that is just a stepping stone to that. So if you just say thank you to existence, thank you to life, thank you to the oneness of existence, which is God. Uh, you call it God, you call it the universe, whatever. But just thank you. And you just connect to that. And you just keep putting your energy out and saying thank you. And then knowing with positive affirmation and, and expectation that all good things are coming. All good things are coming back. Let's see. Pamela says, I do gratitude practice at night if I'm ever having a hard time falling asleep and I sleep like a baby. Oh, that's so beautiful. That's a perfect example of when you could do that and it would be really good, you know, because in the end of the day, uh, sometimes the reason that we have a hard time sleeping is because the mind is going in like thinking, thinking mode, and that will keep you up, right? So if you just say thank you, it kind of puts the mind at ease because it's telling the mind, it's all handled. We are already grateful. It's already done. Whatever I'm worried about concerning myself in my mind, I can relax that now because the mind, you're telling the mind when you say thank you, you're, you're already telling the universe, it's already done. I'm just already grateful. Whatever I'm concerned about, it's handled. Uh, calms the system. Yeah, exactly, Pamela. Let's see. Her says, I express my gratitude to my subscribers and to life every time I go live on YouTube. Oh, good. Yeah, I think you need to do that every day. And we all do. And I'm grateful for everybody here. I'm grateful for you all. I'm grateful for our, our tribe. You know, like one of the things that I learned during the like the COVID lockdown is how important it is to stay connected to community, to tribe, to people that are in a resonant frequency and that are loving and kind and in a high vibration and want to be in alignment with the universe because that energy is what makes life worthwhile. That is what makes life fun and enjoyable. Let's see, I have a comment here. Namaste and thanks for sharing these concepts. Oh, I love you. You're welcome. Yeah, like this is all from the flow state. This is the philosophy of the flow state institute. This is the philosophy of the book that I'm writing, which is called the flow state. And it's based on the principle of the 22 universal laws of life. And the importance of that is that as we align with the universal laws, that's how we align with the truth of life. That's how. And so, you know, sometimes we're like struggling so if you look at all the laws and you're like, okay, let's say you looked at the 22 laws and you're like, okay, I haven't been that grateful lately. Or you know what? I, I'm struggling with this conflict, so I'm not practicing unconditional love or maybe abundance. You're like, I'm feeling constricted around my things or around my money instead of feeling the divine abundance flowing through me. And so I need to practice the feeling of abundance and then to get that abundance flowing. So you can actually apply these very, very literally in your life and to see that result of flow happening immediately. Same thing with like the law of divine order. If you really practice this energy of like really trusting that everything's in divine order, then you can relax and you're not like in anxiety about the future because you realize it's all in divine order. It's unfolding in a divine order according to a beautiful master plan of destiny for the universe, for all of us. And at the same time, my free will allows me to choose my path along this beautiful unfolding so that I may become the greatest becoming that I can be 
the greatest expression of soul in this life through this body. And so I'm going to keep showing up for that. At the same time, I'm so grateful for the universal law of divine order because it gives me peace in knowing that even in the chaos, there is a reason for everything. Leave a comment if you believe that. Even in the chaos, there is a reason for everything. Sometimes we need to experience chaos to experience contrast. Once you've experienced chaos and trauma, you really appreciate peace and harmony even more. Some people can't appreciate peace and harmony because they haven't actually experienced the contrast as much. Now, once you've experienced the contrast a great deal, then you're like, all right, I'm done with it. I don't need any more trauma or chaos. I'm just on the peace and harmony vibe forever. <laughs> Love, peace, harmony, and joy for me, please. And a dose of gratitude every day. And I'll be good because I already had lifetimes of chaos and trauma. I don't need that anymore. I've learned those lessons. Thank you for the lessons. Thank you for the strength that it gave to my soul to work through the darkness, to get to the light. And now I liberate myself from those patterns. In yoga, there's a word for it called samsara, the, the cyclical patterns of existence, where you keep experiencing the same thing over and over in life and in the karmic patterns and in lifetimes after lifetimes. And you can break samsara and you can get out of those patterns. And in Buddhism, they call it the wheel of suffering or the, the wheel of karma. And the way to get out of the wheel of suffering is to get into the wheel of dharma, which is to serve your purpose of life. So if you're serving your purpose of life, that's when you get out of the wheel of suffering and the wheel of karma. That's why I put so much uh, emphasis on people to... Uh, you know, if you want to, to join the Flow State Institute or to do the teacher training to get into a Dharma. Because if you become, if you're in the Dharma and you're serving the world and you're helping others and you're in the current of that, naturally you're in the flow. Naturally, when you're serving your Dharma, you're in the flow and a lot of miracles can come to you and all of this beautiful things can show up because that's the energy of Dharma. You're in the river, you're in the current you're in the flow of life. And so Dharma negates karma, meaning it overrides it. Dharma overrides karma. So if you're feeling like beaten up by karma, you know, like, why does karma keep hitting me? You just, you need to get into your Dharma. So that's why I created the Flow State Institute. It's like, I can help you to become a yoga teacher, an energy healer, a life coach. You can be of service to the world in a plethora of ways. And that's what you can um, create a beautiful life with that. Brittany said, I tried to apply for flow state and it said, contact the administrator. Huh, that's strange. I'll give you the link. I don't know why it would say that. Flow state yoga is the actual link, but if you go to this link, flow state yoga forward slash apply, you'll see the, uh, the options there. But yeah, the big picture is that you know, as you get into your dharma, you're going to really see a shift. And when you see that shift, it's not just a visible, it's a feeling. The feeling is, ah, I see I have a purpose. Ah, I see that my contribution to this world matters. And then it starts to spiral. And that's what I call the golden spiral. The golden spiral is this feeling of, yeah, okay, so as I do this, then more beautiful things come. So it's 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 like a um, I don't know if that link is going to work. Oh, there it is. It's kind of like a self perpetuating, beautiful blessing, right? It's it's the same, the opposite. If you're getting on a spiral down and you're in a karmic loop, you're welcome, goddess. We love to have you a part of the Flow State Institute, and you can join as a, a part of the um, teacher training, or you can. I'll give you a different link. There's um there's another link. Um, where you can just join the community. Joining the community will give you uh, opportunity to, oh wait, oh, I did it again. When you join the community, it gives you an opportunity to serve, but you can do that just as an affiliate if you want, or you can come on and become a full-time, actually like trained, 
healer, teacher, and guide. You know, it really depends on where you're at and the path of your journey. So, you know, everybody who's a part of our training, you know, I really want you to think about this question. Think about it like this. You know, you're here on a mission. The mission is how can I truly live and embody my dharma, my purpose of life? What does that look and feel like? What brings me the most joy out of all that I'm learning? Because we learn about universal laws. You could make a whole a whole part of your, your offering around that. You could teach those. You know, the teaching of the, the flow state um, universal laws is really a beautiful thing. And then build a workshop around that. You could build a, a class around that. You know, I, we also have a whole thing. It's the chakra series where you can teach these yoga practices. Um, and then, then you can, um, first of all, oh, sorry about that. I have the wrong link. I keep posting. The chakra workshop. The I did this. Hold on. The chakra workshop series is one of my most popular things. So basically, each chakra can be a whole class. And when you do this class, like first chakra is for the root, and you go in depth into that energy, and you can build it around different practices, you know, the, the color red, and you build it around the energy of the root, and you build it around, you could even bring food, and you can bring in sweet potatoes or something, root vegetables, you know, ginger, whatever. And, um, you know, so just creating like themes around the offering. That's what we do. So you in the teacher training, you'll, you'll notice we have a whole, that whole module is about the chakra workshops. And then we also have the miracle morning. There's all these different aspects. And then we have the Thai massage. Thai yoga massage was a huge part of my journey because I learned, because I'm such a touching person. I loved it to be able to heal people with my hands and to be able to help people in that way. Um, and, you know, so it's just so beautiful because there's so many different aspects of the, the journey of flow state that you could, if you're like a hands-on healer, you could go in the direction of Thai yoga massage and therapy in that way, energy healing. And then if you're more of a teacher and a coach, you can go like teaching workshops and uh, retreats. And then if you're more like uh, wanting to be more of a life coach, you can do private one-on-one -on -one less uh, sessions and things like that. So there's just so many directions you can go. And so it's limitless. And it's also very personalized and customizable. But at the same time, it's something that, you know, it, it, it's something for everybody and that you can serve the human population on so many levels with this. Yeah, thank you, Brittany. I'm happy to hear that. Let me know if it works, if that works for you. What about you guys? Pamela is like, I kind of like chaos. Maybe it's adrenaline. <laughs> well, I think a lot of people are addicted to this adrenaline chaos. I don't necessarily know if that's uh, healthy. I think that <clears throat> now, if it's just the adrenaline that you like, like you like a lot of energy, that's not bad. That's not unhealthy. But if it's like addicting to chaos, then that's a lot of people are addicted to chaos, to tell the truth. Like who here knows somebody, or even if yourself included, is addicted to chaos. You know when you're addicted to chaos because you create it in your life continuously and you feel like it's a part of your life that you're very comfortable with and that you keep creating it. And it's interesting because sometimes your awareness of it, sometimes the awareness of it doesn't necessarily create the ending of it. So if you have the awareness of it and it's, you know, been like a theme, you can choose out of that. I always call this like opting out of that. Or it's also like um, opting out in the sense of letting it go. Like choosing to let it go is the key. Let's see, she said not chaotic relationships, but I do like adrenaline in an activity kind of way. Yeah, that's cool. Like, like, for example, maybe you like skydiving or maybe you like mountain biking, like being on the, you know, the edge of your seat and feeling your heart pumping. Those are good things. I wouldn't say like that's chaos. Chaos was when everything's just going crazy. That's chaos. Everything doesn't have any rhyme or reason to it. 
that's chaos. You know, and when we say organized chaos, it's like, you know, like I said, with the universe, like shooting star hitting an asteroid. That's some kind of a universal organized chaos. It's like there's things happening, but it's it's like and then there's like other kinds of chaos. But overall, I, I think the the universal alignment is with harmony. So even like she's saying, maybe to find harmony within the chaos. This is a high attainment because in life, there's a there's a chaos in life. We are we can't deny the chaos of life. I mean, it's it's right in our faces. It's in our faces every day. You go on the news, you see the chaos of life. If you see the wars in the world, you see the COVID, whatever, you have all these forms of chaos happening. And so it's like, okay, how can I find my peace and my joy and my alignment with the universe amidst the continuous and never ending chaos of this world and this universe? that's the mastery it's not getting rid of all the chaos although it's nice like because i feel like as you become the calm of the storm less and less chaos will even find you there because it, it can only attract to that which is resonant predominantly not always but most of the time if you're in complete peace and harmony with life chaos is not coming knocking at your door just out of nowhere usually it's usually in response to some thoughts, some situations that are happening. Oh, good, Brittany. Thank you. I'm so happy to hear that. I love you. Azura says, my dharma is to heal with my hands. Yeah, good. Yeah, so we all have this beautiful gift. You know, we have a gift. It's like we are energy beings and you get to choose. What do I put my energy towards? What lights me up the most? What fills me with the greatest joy? to do that, to be that, and then build your life around it. So as an energy healer, as a yoga teacher, as a life coach, you know, do you like to work with people? Do you like to help people? Do you wanna make a positive difference in the lives of others and to contribute to make this world a better place and to build your life around spreading positive energy and healing and love? And so if that, if that feels like resonant, then that could be your dharma. And so if you're in your dharma, you're building your life around that and you're like, okay, so how do you go about really sharing what is the philosophy of this? Because in the philosophy of a lot of religion or in a lot of even yogic traditions, there's a very like, I would say religious context. So most yogic traditions were built from the Hindu tradition which, you know, I've studied that uh, Hindu tradition very extensively, but I wouldn't say I'm a Hindu. And I, I believe in universal consciousness. I believe in the oneness of existence. And so this philosophy of flow, of flow state yoga, of flow state consciousness is really connecting to the oneness of existence and to learn how to channel the wisdom of the universe through you and out into the world as your unique offering whether it's through your maybe you like to make music maybe you write maybe you're a writer maybe you write songs poetry or you just write articles blogs maybe you make music maybe you dance maybe you want to teach art maybe you paint maybe you're a mother and maybe just being the best mother in the universe is your job and so whatever your offering is but to be able to channel the highest the highest self, all the wisdom needed for you to fulfill and reach your highest purpose in this life. And you just channel that from God, from the universe, through your consciousness, and then and then you put that out as your message. So that's flow state. Like when you think about people in flow, you're like, well, you know, it was effortless. Like you think of someone who just sings, like a, maybe Mariah Carrier, you know, like somebody who you think about Celine Dion or somebody who they just get out there and they just sing this amazing song and it's so beautiful. And they've been singing for 20, 30 years, 40 years, sometimes 50 years, however long. But every time they do it, it's so beautiful and it's right on point. That's flow. That's flow. Is that you're living in the Dharma and it's coming through you. You know, people, I, I've met people who've been teaching yoga 
I remember one of my greatest inspiration, um, Dao, she passed away now. She was over a hundred, but her name, Dao Porxiang Lynch. She was a hundred. I think she was a hundred when she passed away, but basically she been, she was the oldest yoga teacher in the world. And she was teaching yoga her whole life. And she was so beautiful and so full of life. You know, she was even on Dancing with the Stars. Like she was a light. And she was a huge inspiration to so many of us because when you're young and you're looking at your life, you're like, what do I want my life to be like when I'm 100? You ever thought about that? What do I want my life to be like when I'm 100? Or like I feel, I'm gonna be 150. So if you're gonna be 150, drop a comment. <laughs> we'll be hanging on the planet together. But um, what do you want the life to be like when you're like older, right? Because a lot of people, as they get older, their energy declines, their mobility declines, and their, their quality of life goes way down with age. But if you keep doing yoga and dancing and meditation and breath and just stay vibrantly alive, you don't have to grow old. I know people that are 100 and they're not old. Lori said she's totally in the 150 club. Woo, yeah. I always felt that when I was a kid. I was a little kid. I was like, I want to be 150. I always felt that. So maybe you're not, you don't have to be that, like grow to be that age, but I feel like we can. And that's the key to it. It's like, we're limitless and we don't have any limits on that. And so we can live a long time. I was just sharing a story last night with a friend of mine, my friend Sahara. And um, it's such an interesting story because there was a, a, a culture, uh, a tribe of people who were living in this northern, northern India, like on the northwestern part, what's in the area called that's currently called Kashmir, which is where the actually Tantra was from that area. But there was a time in history for many, many thousands of years, they were living, they were the oldest culture, they were living over 150 years old as the average age of their whole people, all the tribe, 150 or older. And people, they didn't know why. And one of the reasons, because they had such an interesting climate, half of the year it was freezing and everything was under snow. And so they couldn't grow vegetables. This was before they had refrigeration. They couldn't, they didn't have any canned food or anything, you know, so they have no vegetables, no fruits, no food. They had pretty much no food. They just had a little bit of rice that they were able to keep. And they had a little bit of rice every day, small amount. And they basically were fasting all the time. And how interesting that they were living 150 and they were hardly ever eating. And it, there was like a correlation that was drawn from that, that actually eating less will lead to living longer. And there's a science that backs that up that shows that the more you eat, the lower your lifespan. And the less you eat, you can live longer. So uh, what happened was, then the Westerners came along and they were like, oh, these poor people are starving to death. And they gave them refrigeration and they did all this. They gave them canned food and processed food and, and they thought they were starving. So they're going to give them all these things. And what happened very rapidly? The life expectancy went down by half. The bet, like they were like everybody else after that. They were like living to a maximum 70. So this is really interesting because, you know, when you think about life and health and flow, you know, like, it's also about keeping the vessel very pure and clean. And that's why also in the Flow State Institute, I teach about cleansing. We have a whole protocol on the juice, uh, green smoothie cleanses or the, the diet, the nutrition, and also fasting. I have some videos I'm gonna be sharing soon about the power of fasting, whether it's water fasting, smoothie cleanse, green juice fasting, all of these. Drop a comment if you are into fasting. Fasting is so fascinating. Let's see, Pamela says, I definitely believe that we do not need to age the way our culture does. Yeah, it's so weird, right? Like, it's in the mind. People are like, I'm getting old. So the more you say that to yourself, if you're like, I'm getting old, then you're gonna start feeling old. And as you feel old, you're like uh, old, because you think and you become what you think. So therefore, 
You're sabotaging yourself. So instead, you want to think youthful thoughts like, look how young I am. I always, people always tell me I look 25 and I'm like, I'm basically 25. So then I tell everybody, I'm basically 25. And I just keep, you know, creating that reality of this mantra of, of being youthful. And it's been working. Let's see, Azura said, I have a past life as a Native American chief and I was hella old. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Western processed food or health draining. When I eat only veggies and fruit, I get on a very little and I feel great. Yeah, it's the most important thing. You know, like if you really feel into how you feel when you eat certain things and then how you feel when you eat other things, then you can really be guided, right? Some people, they feel the best when, like I like intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is when you just eat a small amount, like several hours per day, and then the rest of the day you don't eat anything. This is a great sort of protocol. And it's I have a video I'm going to be releasing on, uh, on YouTube soon about that. But basically the idea is that, you know, like during that time when you're not eating, what you're doing is you're giving your digestive system a break. So then the rest of the body can heal itself and regenerate the cellular regeneration. Does time restricted feeding count? I don't know what that means. Time restricted feeding. Does are you talking about intermittent fasting? Sounds like it. it. Kind of sounds like another way of saying it. But it sounds like the way you would say it about a baby. <laughs> like she's on a feeding schedule and we're time restricting her because she's drinking too much milk. <laughs> you know. But anyway, like the modern word of it is called intermittent fasting, which means that you take breaks from food. It can be 10 hours, it could be five days, you know, but you take breaks. And, um, and during that time, you let your digestive system have a rest. And during that time, all of that extra energy that usually goes to digestion now will go to healing your cells, healing your, your body, your organs. Everything needs that break in order to heal. So it's really important and powerful. Oh yeah, intermittent fasting. So drop a comment if you're into intermittent fasting. I definitely love doing it. I always was doing it. It was funny because there was a time when people were like, you need to have breakfast. You have to have three meals a day. And then when I was into bodybuilding and bikini modeling and stuff, people felt you need to do five meals a day or six. So I was like, oh shoot. So I was always trying to do more meals and I felt like I was my metabolism was very high but I was very hungry all the time and so it was very uncomfortable um Lori says I did it before it was cool <laughs> yeah a lot of people don't have it as a lifestyle but you can make it as a lifestyle or you can just do it here and there it really depends where you're at there was a time in my life when it wasn't my full-on lifestyle but then as I got deeper and deeper into my yoga path then I realized ah it's a lifestyle. Like I love doing consistently intermittent fasting. I love doing consistent cleansing and, and, and um, different forms of cleansing. Let's see, Pamela, I definitely drink more liquids than I eat solids. That's good. Yeah, the liquids is easier to process. So it goes directly into the cells. You absorb the nutrients fully. And, and you know, and so that's when you really get all the nutrients and the hydration and everything that you need. So in that process and that experience, then you're gonna end up feeling more flow, right? So a lot of that does affect the energy of flow state, you know, if you think about it, because it's um, how you feel is everything. So if, you're, if your energy feels um, like, nourished, rested, you're going to be more in flow. Anybody have any questions about that? Yeah, 
in the end of the day, when it comes to flow state, like the reason that I created this school was because I realized that there's a lot of systems out there that like, for example, yoga, and they're following traditional path, but it doesn't take into consideration the modern philosophy as well in, in the sense of we're in a continuous evolution. Humanity is continuously evolving and we are continuously rising into a, a more expansive, more expanded state of being as humans on earth. And so if we only look to see what people did 5,000 years ago and then just base everything on that, um, it's limiting, right? So like yoga was created 5,000 years ago. So a lot of the ancient scriptures were written and they're, they're still very applicable. And I, and I totally believe, and even in the teacher training, we have a huge library of, of those books and they're really, really useful and wonderful resources to have wisdom and guidance from the masters. And at the same time, we have modern technology, modern masters, you know, like, for example, I love the teaching of Sadhguru. And I, and I also like, you know, the, the modern teachers that are teaching different ways that we can up level, whether it's through fasting, right, whether it's through various new forms of meditations, whether it's new adaptations of breath, like, for example, Wim Hof, he developed his own breath combined with the cold therapy with meditation, like he has his own system. And, you know, in the Flow State Institute, I love to share about that because it's really powerful, healing energy medicine. And at the same time, there's lots of other very powerful breath meditations that we can offer. But Wim Hof is a modern adaptation of ancient teachings. And the Flow State Institute is also, it's a platform for modern adaptations of ancient teachings and wisdom that takes into account the continuous evolution of consciousness. So as humans evolve, we are becoming more and more aware of even more that's available to us. And at the same time, the, the truth, the ancient connection to source, that always remains the same. Even if it's in 100,000 years from now, or if it's 100,000 years ago, that's the same. The source, the existence, this is the same. But as humans, we evolve in our relationship and our understanding of it and our connection with it and different ways that we can feel a greater connection to it. Like maybe for some of, some of you, you feel the most connected. Leave a comment if you feel the most connected to the source or existence when you're meditating. And then leave a comment if it's when you're dancing and leave a comment if it's when you're doing breath or leave a comment if it's when you're singing or doing mantra or leave a comment if it's when you're making love or practicing tantra or leave a comment is when you're healing someone or, or you know doing some kind of healing work or maybe it's when you're doing art or when it's when you're serving the world in your unique way or when you're writing you know so there's all these ways right so as we evolve and expand that's when we are able to see that like our own evolution is continuously evolving and expanding as well. So we don't wanna get stuck in some old paradigm that's based on 5,000 years ago that some of that, definitely a lot of that's still applicable, but it's not the whole story. And why would we stay in a 5,000 year old story when we could include that in a relevant, new, ever evolving, ever expanding story? And it's all one anyway. Pamela said, uh, Lori said, all of those ravens singing and breathing. Pamela, yes, like Lori said, most of those. Yeah, making love, art, writing, and healing. Yeah, good. Yeah, it's so beautiful. You know, like it's like everybody's different. And sometimes that's why I call this energy medicine, because sometimes what's working for you evolves or changes over time. 
And so that's why it's really beautiful through the Flow State Institute and our teacher trainings, whether it's online or the live programs, what we're really offering is for you to have a huge arsenal, like a toolkit that you can draw upon. You learn the teachings, you learn the practices, and then you can, it's like now you have a medicine cabinet and, and any time you need it, it's there. You're like, yeah, now I have my yoga practice. Now I have my meditation practice. Now I, I didn't know the mantras and, and I know the breath and I have the kriyas and the kundalini practice. And I know how to do the fasting and the detoxing protocols healthy and, and how to guide others in all of this. And, and it's like in learning that you will serve your life in every possible way for the remainder of your whole life, regardless of what you decide to do with it. Maybe it's just for your own evolution, but if you can help others to, you know, share that with others, it's also a perpetuation of good karma and expansion of the of your dharma. So it's just so beautiful. The cycle of life. As you learn things that help you, you help others with that medicine. And then you become the medicine, which is my favorite way of looking at it. Singing was really something I wanted to get into. I had insecurities about it growing up part of my own personal healing and to start singing and playing music again. Yeah, I feel like music is such a medicine. That's why I always include singing and mantras because to me, out of everything, music is usually one thing that can really shift your energy quickly. Music and movement, right? And then nature, like there's so many things, right? But, but little things, like it's just like you realize, ah, music, meditation, singing, dancing, go out in nature, have your bare feet on the earth. These are medicine, you know, and it sounds like so simple, but people don't know this medicine. They have a whole science in Japan. It's called the art of forest bathing. And they started a whole movement now where they are actually doctors are prescribing people to go and stay in a forest for at least a week. And this is their medicine prescription. Because <laughs> there's, no, there's a knowing, now it's scientifically being prescribed and it's proven. But there's a knowing that just being in nature, breathing the fresh air, being around the harmony of the divine perfection of nature, it starts to heal you, release your anxiety, release your stress. And stress and anxiety is the root of all sickness and disease. So if we really want to get to the core and heal, you got to get to the core of healing of sickness and disease, which is stress. And what does stress really mean? Stress is any energy that's out of harmony with the universe, which is usually a mind, like anxiety, like it feels like I'm not enough. I'm pushing myself. Um, I'm, I'm running on a treadmill and I'm getting nowhere. I'm working hard and I'm burning out. Like these are like practices that modern society teaches people to do that, encourages people to do that. And it's so unhealthy to push yourself to exhaustion. You know, I've, I've actually experienced that myself. It was part of what led to the flow state teaching was to be in total burnout and exhaustion from overworking myself and then realize that is not healthy and that is not a good path to be on. And so in order to be back in flow, you have to give yourself time to rest and relax. You have to give yourself time to heal and then reapproach everything that you're doing in a new way with more flow, with more ease, with more grace, with more universal alignment with more support, whatever you need, you know? Um, let's see, often when I start singing, I can hear angels sing with me. Yeah, I believe the angels are always with us. And in the end of the day, as we connect to our highest self and become just a vessel for the universe to flow through us, then of course, the angels are always going to be singing with us because the angels are ever present. They're always there with us. And so we have that opportunity uh, to connect to that energy at all times. The best way to do it is right to just call it in and to clear the energy so that the receptive space is open to that portal because the angels are always with us. They're always 
available to us. You would never knock on the door of the angelic realm and be like, sorry, we're busy. No, they are literally like the, the presence of the divine energy of that frequency is available to us all at all times. So it's just tuning in. And that's what flow state's about is like learning how to tune in to certain frequencies, learning how to tune in into the Akashic records to be a channel, to be a divine, like a lightning rod to connect to that beautiful energy of flow, angelic realm, ascended master realm the gods and goddesses of frequency but it's at the very 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 broadest perspective it's all one whether you want to say angels ascended masters deities it's all one you know it's just different aspects of the same oneness and so that's the teaching of flow state is that a deity is not a separate entity of god it's just god but we're giving it a name, we're giving it a face so that it can be more relatable to the human consciousness that operates in this duality construct of the way that we see things in life. So it's super interesting, it's very important to allow that, you know, um, that knowing so you can connect to your guides, connect to the universe and, and then allow all of that to flow through. And that's the support. You know, if you're ever asking for support, like you're calling in the angels, you're calling in the support. Think about it like this. That's already available to you. What is possibly blocking it is the question. Because it's already there. You know, it's like, let's say your best friend is standing outside the front door, but the door is locked. And you're like, man, I don't have any friends. And your friend's just standing at the door knocking, but you don't hear it because you got some TV show. It's really loud. That TV show is the news. And it's all bad news and it's all fear and fear and anxiety and stress. And so that TV show is so loud. You can't hear your best friend and the angels all knocking at the door trying to get in, trying to support you, trying to love you, trying to be that, you know, that presence in your life. So just turn, turn the dial turn the TV off, let go of that old TV story that's perpetuating the fear and just focus 100% on the angelic realm, on the, on the light, on your dharma and watch your life unfold in miraculous ways. Thank you, I love everything about you too. Thank you all for being here, I love you. You know, every every week we do these live sessions in the teacher training, and it's actually one of my favorite things. This was one of the things that really helped through the whole uh, lockdown, honestly, was the feeling of that we have this really epic tribe, and it's the Flow State community. We're getting ready to launch it in a bigger way, and in this Flow State community, we're going to be... Uh, starting a, like a, a session this summer. So anybody that you know that might want to join um, to become a certified flow state teacher, yoga teacher, energy healer, or life coach, we're going to start a summer session where everybody starts together in, in July for 12 weeks. So that will be, you know, a beautiful way for the tribe to all come together. And we'll be launching that along with this other beautiful thing called children of the future and that's another vision that i have for you know creating this research project with my friend from harvard to show how yoga and meditation should be mandatory in schools for all children and these projects are super dear to my heart i've put all my energy into this for my entire life so i love for you all to be a part of it and uh, love to be able to support you in all the ways that i can love you and all you to be here. Does anybody have any questions about anything I've been talking about? We talked about a lot of the universal laws. There's even more than I just mentioned. I can talk about a few more because I like actually like to you know share about this. It's such a cool thing. I'm finishing the book right now, so it's like very relevant. Uh, I love to share about it. Um, let's see, uh, the law of free will. We already talked about. I'm scrolling through the book right now. Uh, let's see. This one is, law of action. Oh, that's a good one. The law of action, 
my friend actually wrote a part of that my friend sahara we were just talking last night the law of action is super important a lot of times like for example in the the secret the movie and the book they talked a lot about let's say like the law of attraction which is also one of the laws in the flow state book but one of the things that everybody always said was they they left out something very important and I, I i call this the law of action is like you can't just believe and receive it has to be also you you got to be do do something take action which could be something as simple as pick up the phone and make a phone call or it could be as simple as um, make that decision cut that uh, negative energy out of your life do the cleanse do the teacher training get certified start your dharma um, you know, there's so many things, but it's literally like law of action. Just do it. Take the action. Do it. And and that's really one of the missing links in a lot of people's journey is that they're like spiritual people waiting for life to just happen. And if you just wait for it to happen, it'll just unfold in, in a very, you know, kind of nonchalant way. But if you want to be the master of the destiny and to really have um, a little bit more of mastery over your life, then the law of action is so powerful. Yeah, the law of action. And so my friend, she calls it the law of sacred doing. And I like that, like, because I think a lot of people, they feel like, no, but it's it's like more spiritual to just uh, not do anything. And then it just shows up. Like sometimes you can get this instant manifestation. You just put out a thought and all of a sudden, Voila. Have you ever had that happen? Leave a comment if that's ever happened for you, where you had a thought and, and it manifested instantly. You didn't really have to do anything. But even that thought was a doing, but that's a very subtle, subtlest one of doing, which is the thought and then the manifestation. But look at the bigger picture and say, wow, actually, the um, there's like sometimes these little calls to action. We get that in the guidance of the soul. When, you, when you're tuning into your higher self and your higher self is speaking to you and it's giving you some guidance and it's like, all right, you need to make this call. You need to do the training. You need to get certified. You need to move forward. You need to take action. You need to cut off those people. You need to stop those bad habits. You need to change the habit. And, and when I say need to, it's really just the soul's guidance of saying, this is the step to take that's gonna lead you to that next higher level or to that new, let's say, dimension or realm of experience of life, or some people call it quantum jumping, like I was talking about earlier, or you can call it, um, Oh, what's the other word for it that we were saying? Um, yeah, timeline. So when it goes to the new timeline, which is really like, how do you get to that next timeline? Take this action. Okay, now this one. Okay, now this one. And the more you do that, then you go, oh, I'm being divinely guided. I remember there was an um, interview with Oprah and she talked about that. She's like, the only thing, because people always ask her, you know, like, how do you get to be where, where you are, like how, how do you become Oprah, right? And she said, the only thing you gotta worry about is in the morning, she asks in her meditation, in her prayer practice, she asks, what is the best next step for my life? What is the best next step for my life? That's it. And then just listen be guided by that but the key is take action so if the next best step is basically like you should join the flow state teacher training <laughs> or like you know whatever or like do the in the flow state teacher training we have the master business academy it's like yeah you should start the business academy and start getting that ball rolling even if you're just in the middle of the training like if that guidance comes listen to it because that's your soul speaking. And there is a timing to that where it's speaking to you in divine timing, where it's saying, okay, do this now. And then that's going to lead you to the next thing. That's going to lead you to the next thing. That's going to lead you to the next person. That's going to lead you to the next place. That's going to lead you to the next step. That guidance 
it happens in, in that way. It's very step by step. And that's how we get to where we are right now. You can look at where you are in life right now and say, how did I get here? And you look back and you're like, yeah, that step led to that step, that decision led to that, that step, that decision led me to that person that led me to this opportunity that led me to this moment. And that action led me to that opportunity. You know, they say luck is nothing other than opportunity meets preparation. So every action that you take is the preparation and the opportunity will meet you when you're prepared for it. It will meet you head on. And it will be like, ah, be like, wow. You know, I like I when I remember I when I started teaching yoga and being a, like a life coach, I remember um, I was prepared for that. Why? Because I literally gave up everything. I had that old corporate job. If you watched my video about that, you, if you didn't watch it, you can watch that on YouTube. But I had this corporate job that I hated. I just gave up everything and I said, I'm going to go for my dreams. I'm going to go for what makes me feel good. I'm going to go for where I feel joy. And I just took a leap of faith in that direction. And I, I never looked back. And the key to that was, and still is, and for you as well, is that you need to keep making the steps in the direction of your highest joy. And that alone will take you everywhere, you know, and and nothing else. You know, a lot of times we can think about all the decisions that we might have made that were just for money or that were for other reasons, right? I know um, I was living in Hollywood for a while, like in LA, and a lot of decisions over there are made about fame, made about whatever, like who you know, like all this kind of like ball game like that. And I was like, but if it doesn't bring you joy, I don't necessarily encourage going down those roads. Because the only thing that's going to matter if you look back and we when this was how we started this session today if you look back at the end of your life if you're 150 or if you're 100 or if you're whatever 80 years old who knows how long you're going to live maybe tomorrow's the end but let's say today was the last day of your life would you be happy with how this life has unfolded and if not what would you change what changes would you make right here and right now that will bring you greater joy, that will make you feel that you fulfilled your purpose here in life, that will make you feel that you've lived the life that you came here to live and that you're born to live. What would those changes be? Make that decision and then make those changes. And, and that is the unfolding of your miraculous destiny, right? But it's that free will every step of the way, that choice to make that decision, to make that step every step of the way, that's the free will element. And so the free will is also stay where you are, do what you're doing, don't make any changes, and things will be the same. That's a choice as well. So we have these choices at every moment. So we're like, all right, I'm choosing this right now, which is to stay where I am. And I like where I am. And I'm in the comfort zone. And it's okay. Sometimes it's good to be in a comfort zone for a while, you know, because we're like, you know, I'm tired of doing stuff. I just want to relax. <laughs> but if you've been in the comfort zone for a while, you know, you haven't seen a lot of growth and expansion, then you're like, huh, maybe I should step into the unknown for a bit and see about some expansion and see about some uh, new people, new opportunities, new action steps, new realm of living. And that's what the flow state's about. It's literally like living in this field of, it's kind of like what I like to call, I used to call it falling in love with the mystery. It's literally, you don't actually know what the future holds, but you can trust that it's going to be great if you're making these kinds of guided steps to get there. And that's a really, really beautiful way to overcome anxiety because a lot of anxiety is fear about the future. So we have fear about the future and we're sitting here like, oh my God, but you would never fear the future if you had absolute faith and trust in knowing that your future is going to be even better than now. Like if you know without any question, without any shadow of a doubt that your future is literally going to be even better than this moment and it's just going to keep getting better and better. If you know that, if you feel that, if you trust that 100%, you will never have anxiety. This is literally the cure to anxiety because most people feel the future because they feel like it's going to get worse. Like they're like, well, the future, what if it's worse than now? You would never fear it if you knew it was just going to be better. 
You'd be like celebrating on the journey to that moment while you're like celebrating this moment and being stoked about every moment and being like, yeah, life is good in the hood. <laughs> Instead of like, what does the future hold? It's going to be horrible. What if it's really hard? What if it's harder than this? Think about this. I've already been through the hardest things that you could ever experience in your life. I watched my mother die. I grew up in foster homes. I lost my virginity to rape. I had the absolute worst case scenarios in every aspect of life. But the good thing about all that is it taught me that, you know, it's only going to get better from here. <laughs> I am the absolute embodiment of that. You can trust that because I'm telling you. Brittany, doing that now, focusing on my health and praying for positive results so I can join you and join you in Bali. The universe is in my favor. Aho, uh Brittany. First of all, we definitely are gonna see you in Bali. I feel that for you. One of the things I've always worked with people about is this energy of trust and knowing that whatever you're seeking, whatever you want, whatever your soul is guiding you is also what your soul needs and wants. And that thing needs and wants you to be a part of it for the whole to be complete. So you even wanting to be in Bali with us for the Flow State Teacher Training this year, and we're gonna be there in November and December, like that that desire is born from knowing that your soul's gonna be there. Now, how are you gonna make that happen is another story. One of the things I work with a lot of people on is like the trusting, but also like the calling in your abundance angels, we can call them, abundance frequency. And that's why I talk about this whole session today is like aligning with those universal laws. How can you align with the abundance frequency that you already have, which is through gratitude, right? Being grateful for what you already have calls in more, but also giving, maybe getting into a little bit of a flow of giving, whether it's giving $5 to a homeless person or donating to a children's charity or go volunteer your time at an orphanage or, you know, just do something that gets the flow of, of abundance and generosity and uh, uh, giving flowing because it is that energy that will create more of the other, the what you want and need to come to you because look, you're coming from the overflow. You're giving your time and your energy and your money. You're giving it knowing that it's always coming back multiple tenfold but don't just give it to like a bad thing right like if you give your money if you give your money to like corrupt cause right so let's say you donate to something where they're drilling oil in the rainforest like you know ultimately there's a karma to every giving and every action so if you give to a source that is corrupt it's not going to create the same beautiful energy as if you give to a source that is really doing good in the world. So you want to consider that. But give your energy and go, and give your time and give your money and put the energy out there that you are infinitely provided for, infinitely abundant, and that your dreams are all supported by the universal source of life because you are here for a divine purpose. And in order to fulfill that divine purpose, that you will be provided for every step of the way in every single way in order to get to that next step for yourself and knowing that when you do you've already decided you've talked to the universe you've told the source that you are going to be of service to this world and that is your greatest intention and aspiration for your soul in this life is to contribute to make the world a beautiful more beautiful brighter uh, loving, healing space. And so in order to fulfill that destiny, you're calling in the support. You're calling in whatever it is, the financial resources, the time off, whatever that could be preventing that from happening. Um, you know, and we even have our affiliate program with the Flow State Institute so that you can actually be paid uh, and earn your way there. So you could go to the teacher training absolutely free just for uh, referring people to our programs. So that's ways that we've created to be even greater support to our tribe. So it's like, if money is an issue, no worries. Refer five people, you come for free, you know, or like, you know, there's different ways that we have available, but these are all support from me. And all I am is just a channel of the universe. So the universe wants to support you through my, through my vessel, 
So I'm like, okay, I've been doing this 16 years, but really like thousands of lifetimes. <laughs> I came back in this body doing it again and I'm still doing it and I'm never going to stop doing it because this is what I'm here for and I love doing it. <laughs> I love to be able to share the truth of life and I um, benefit from it because I love sharing this. Nothing better than helping people to discover the source of life within you and your power that you have and the power that you can access by being in greater and greater alignment with the source of life. What a beautiful thing, right? So you can do that too. That's what I love about it. It's not just me. I'm not like, and that's my dharma, but you can do something else. If you want to do what I do, do what I do. If you want to do it in a different way, you can do that too. But we just have all these resources in place. So then now from there, it's like, all right, you choose your own adventure. Who here was ever, uh, as a kid, I used to read these books called Choose Your Own Adventure. <laughs> it was so fun. Did If you ever read that book, leave a comment, let me know. To me, that was like the best as a kid. And uh, what I loved about it was when you're reading the book, what happens is, let's say the character is this young, you know, young girl, and then she's going, and the first option is she can go to Peru or uh, India, right? And then like, so it's like, okay, if you want to go to Peru, you go to page 26. If you want to go to India, you go to page 35. So you flip ahead and you read about it. You're like, oh, okay. So now you're in Peru and you go on this adventure. And then what I always used to do, I'd go back to the first one and I would say, now what was the page for India? And I'd do them both. Because I was like, why limit yourself? You're a limitless being. You don't get to choose one, one adventure. No, you have limitless options here. You get to choose. So you start on the journey, you get the tools, you get the resources, you go out there, you start sharing your magic, you start healing people, you start being a light in the world, you start being a blessing to humanity, you start seeing the abundance flowing because you're coming from a pure, pure place of service. From there, what happens? What happens? Ah, you're guided to the next step and the next step. And lo and behold, it's a miraculous adventure. Isn't that fun? It's a miraculous adventure. Who here has ever read the book, The Alchemist? Love that book. I love Paulo Coelho. He's so freaking brilliant. And, you know, in The Alchemist, that's his whole thing. Like he goes on this journey to Egypt. He's just guided by this, this guidance that tells him he needs to go to Egypt because that's where the treasure is. How beautiful. I don't want to give away the book, but if you've watched it, or I mean, if you read the book, Alchemist, who's read it? I really, um, Lori says, I really took to heart you're loving your bills talk on the NBA. And yes, I love the choose your own adventure. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, I'll, I'll mention that, Lori. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, for Brittany or anybody else that might be working with the energy of abundance and the universal law of abundance. I love this principle. And uh, I learned it um, many years ago when I was like 20. I didn't always practice it, which is my, um, you know, I'm just admitting I'm human. But when I do practice it, it's miraculous. And it's this idea that like you love your bills. So like, here's the thing. Let's say you get your phone bill, or your electric bill or whatever, any kind of bill that you have to pay, your rent, whatever. You get this bill in the mail. Now there's two ways the energy can feel to you. You can feel like heavy anxiety, like, oh no, I hate paying this. Or you feel excited about it. You're like, I'm so grateful that I have the abundance to pay this bill. I'm so grateful that I have the abundance to afford this home. I'm so grateful that I have the abundance to afford this food or this phone or this internet or whatever you got to pay. And just, just putting the love and the appreciation towards the bill, towards that expense, it's loving the energy of giving and receiving. So that giving energy, which is the paying of the bill, is just the flip side of the coin of the receiving energy of the abundance codes of more abundance coming in to support you in order to pay more, more bills. Like another one is I love the, you know, I, I try to bless my, my costs of like my, my team, right? So I have people that work for me. And when I pay them, like my website people and all these technology people that I work with, I like to think I'm blessing the money and I'm, I'm so grateful because it's supporting their family as well. And I'm, I'm blessing their family and I'm blessing their whole community with this. And so you can see it in a much bigger way. 
let's see, you and Sahara were on the same party recently, I noticed. <laughs> that's right, we had fun. Anyway, so hopefully that's helpful, Brittany, or anybody else that's working with this energy of abundance, calling in that frequency and really aligning with it. In the Flow State book, I talk about that, but it's also in the Master Business Academy, I talk about that. And, uh, you know, it's super important. This is all part of the flow state teaching, part of the teacher training, but really like this energy around everything. That's the key to it. If you were going to sum it all up to one freaking second, like one sentence, everything is energy. So if we like, how do we respond? What is the energy that we have around these people, around our family, around our home, around our bills, around our work, around our our workouts, you know, whatever, whatever it is, like even our sleeping routine, like, like I loved what you said, Pamela, I think um, practicing gratitude before you go to sleep and that gives you a beautiful restful sleep. So if you think about it, you know, like every single aspect of life can become more conscious, more mindful. And that's how we build a miraculous life. It's by picking apart, literally dissecting every single thing that we do, every way that we interact with life and seeing where are the cracks? Because those cracks are what create a block to the flow, right? Those cracks are where there's a leak and there's a leak of energy. And there's a, um, maybe in that leak is a toxic fumes getting in because the, the relationship that we have towards life in that one aspect of our life is not in harmony with the universe. And we all have those things, whether it's with a relationship, maybe you're like, you know, I get along with everybody, but not my, my dad, right? Or whatever. And you're like, we always fight, you know, it's always an argument or something like that, right? So if that's happening, for example, I remember that was my situation many years ago when I, I uh, didn't have a good relationship with my dad. And I remember that was a huge block to the flow, also a leak of my energy because I realized there was a lot of pain to be healed there, a lot of unresolved trauma. So as, you know, through the Flow State Institute, that's why we also focus on releasing trauma, healing these ancestral wounds or past life karma or any of that, is that we literally can continuously, you know, like find even more and more subtle ways to level up. And it can, that's why I talked about earlier in this, in this whole talk about 1% improvement every day becomes 365% every year. And as we look at the little tiny things that we can, that we can heal, that we can evolve, that we can uh, have a new relationship towards that. Like, uh, that's why I loved that you brought that up, Lori, about the way of seeing loving your bills, like little things are big. I love the, the whole thing of blessing your water, blessing your food, blessing the sunrise, blessing everything, literally like every minute blessing life. That's why I look at life. It's like no, a ceremony because life is a ceremony. Then like every moment is a blessing. Then you are a blessing. I think the highest attainment besides for liberation, of course, is that you are a blessing to all who come into contact with your energy. That, there's nothing above that, you know? What would be above that? It just depends, and then from there, it just grows and grows, and then it becomes, you know, maybe you're blessing 10 people, then you're blessing 1,000 people, then you're blessing a million people, then it's 10 million, then it's 100 million. Now you're blessing billions of people. But still, your energy is a blessing, and that's the aspiration of flow state. And to attain that is a progression of healing the cracks, aligning with the universe, being in integrity with the source of life and with yourself and letting go of all those old paradigms that don't serve you and don't create resonance with the frequencies of, of the light. And so that's where we're at. I love you guys so much. So happy to spend this time. I like that we do these on Sunday morning, honestly, because it feels like kind of like church. It's like, oh, yeah, baby, we're speaking the truth of the gospel is a flow state gospel. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm going to be releasing this flow state book soon. And the next month is when I'm going to be finishing it. I've already written, like I said, 80,000 words, which is something in the vicinity of 300 pages. But I'm finishing 
working on it. Let's see. Azur says, what is the best way to resolve karma with parents? The relationship with my father is not so good. His vibe is low. You know, I would suggest reading Sadhguru's book. He just wrote about karma, first of all. Um, but secondly, there's a lot of ways to resolve karma with parents. Ultimately, it's just unconditional love and forgiveness. There's nothing really above that. And then cutting cords of any stories that keep you stuck in the old paradigm of how they weren't enough and they didn't show up and they're toxic, lame, you know, ways that they were not enough. And literally cutting those cords, reprogramming your paradigm around the relationship to some of those energies with your parents or with anybody and sending out unconditional love and compassion to them. Because in the end of the day, everybody literally is always just trying the best that they can. This was like the aha moment to me. It's literally like, if someone's literally doing the best they can and they're still doing a terrible job, you just bless them. You just send them compassion. You're like, that's the best you can do. Oh, okay. It's like a baby. That's why I always like to think of people like babies. I'm like, all right, you're never going to kick a baby and be angry at it because it can't walk. You say, just a baby. All it can do is crawl. I'm not going to be angry. Even if I need this baby to walk, I'll just help it out. You know, just like, come on, you know, I'll go walk by myself if I need to. But the baby can't walk, so I'm not going to be angry about it. And that's how I like to see my parents or any anybody that is at a level that you're just like, what the heck is that? You just look at it and you're like, wow, that's where they're at. And acceptance and um, letting go and tolerance and compassion and forgiveness and, and, uh, and um, trust that this is all in divine and perfect order. It happened for a reason to make you who you are. All of those are the teachings I actually spoke a lot about that in my first book, Journey to Joyful. If you didn't read it, you can get that on Amazon. But it's literally all of those. And it's also in the Flow State Teacher Training, Journey to Joyful. But I talked about all this. You know, how do you heal these wounds? Because that was a big part of my earlier journey. Teresa says, what spiritual practices can help narcissistic behavior in us and our family? Good question. Narcissism is this compulsion towards making everything about yourself whether it's you or someone else. So think about it. If everything's about you, that is the ultimate duality. It's saying, I'm the center of the universe. Everything's about me and everything revolves around me. And if you think that, then that's such a separation, right? Because if that's the case and everything else is less than you, less important than you and all that. So instead you need to see all beings as one. So that's the healing. That's why in the flow state book, I have the whole, the chapter on universal law of oneness. As you are able to see that all is one, then you would never be like, I'm the best. I'm the center of attention because that's separation. And that's like elitism. Now you still want to have confidence. You want to be like, I'm great. I'm great. And I'm amazing. But that doesn't mean you're not too. So I'm great and you're great. We're both great because we're one. Instead of I'm great and you're not, that's narcissism. Or I'm great and I deserve everyone to just do everything for me, but I don't need to do anything for anyone else. That's narcissism. Or the feeling like it's just the way that it is and I'm not tolerant of even listening to your side of anything. That's narcissism, right? So these are the energies, it's selfishness. And so it's the ego and it's a trap. So to get out of narcissism and for people that you might encounter that are narcissists, first of all, run for the border. I would not stick around very long. <laughs> but besides that, you know, ultimately you can look at it and say, oh, okay, so this is teaching me something about having deeper levels of, of uh, loving compassion, deeper understanding of the oneness of existence and more um, inclusivity and generosity of my energy. How can I serve in a bigger way? It will lead you to be a better um, contributor to the world. So it's super important. So if you're around a narcissist, you don't wanna stick around too long, but at the same time, there's a lot of lessons there. That's usually why we would attract it. I attracted a narcissist one time and it almost killed me. But in the end, I learned a lot. And one of the big things is take your power back 
and cut the ties and rise. Those are my two go-to uh, advice on that. Take your power back, cut the ties and rise. But at the same time, you know, learn the lesson. If you don't lesson, if you don't learn the lesson, you're going to keep repeating that. You're going to keep attracting it. So learn the lesson. Be willing to see the red flags really up in the front. And so that is the key. Because if you don't, you just keep attracting it. It's a pattern that never ends until you finally see it. You say, oh my God, the light goes on. And you say, oh my God, it's happened again. But this time, no, no, no. It's not gonna go on and on. This time, one week was enough. One minute was enough. The red flag was bright and shiny in my face. I'm not going to go down that road and suffer. I'm not going to entertain this narcissistic behavior patterns in other people in my life. I'm not going to invite it. I'm not going to allow it. I'm not going to um, tolerate it. I'm going to cut it and I'm going to bid it farewell with grace and love. And I'm going to say thank you for that lesson because now I finally got it for good forever. And that's when you learn the ultimate and that's when you literally rise like that's when you hit a paradigm shift and you timeline shift and that's when you have a huge breakthrough it's when you finally get it and that is a permanent wisdom it will never happen to you again until then you keep attracting and tolerating it and being like oh okay i deserve this for some reason or whatever story perpetuates until you're willing to just forever let it go cut it off learn the lesson. Hopefully this has been helpful for you all. I love you so much. I love doing these sessions. Um, every week we have this for the Flow State Teacher Training. It's such a joy. I love our tribe. I love you, Pamela. I love your comments, Raven and, and Laura. You guys have been so wonderful. I love the interaction of our tribe and community and uh, really looking forward to this summer. Anybody who's in Florida, by the way, I'm having a big, a big celebration for my birthday. It's also going to be for 4th of July, which is so relevant that I happen to be, I was supposed to be born on the Independence Day, the Freedom Day, but I was born four days late because I like to brew myself a little longer, marinate in my mother's womb, but whatever. Uh, we're going to celebrate my birthday on the 4th of July this year. Big party. So if you're going to be in Florida, you're welcome. And it's going to include camping and music, ecstatic dance, yoga, meditation, cacao, fun stuff, camping again, I said. But anyway, we're going to be doing all that 4th of July weekend in South Florida, um, just one night. But anyway, uh, it's going to be fun. And you can camp on a 20 acre lychee farm. <laughs> and it's so cool. They have like a freshwater lagoon with a waterfall. And it's really beautiful. Anyway, so uh, super excited for that but anyway meanwhile we're going to be launching the flow state app pretty soon the flow state teacher training session will begin in july for everybody who wants to be in a structured 12-week organized program for the online group and yeah if you're thinking about coming to bali i'm super excited about that we have amazing beautiful souls signed up to be with us in bali in november december it's going to be life-changing the most epic thing this is our 10th annual teacher training so it's definitely going to be amazing pamela is going to be with us so stoked maybe Lori will too you never know and uh you never know maybe raven and some other angels in the tribe so anyway Love you all. Send you so much blessings and know that you are divinely guided. You are on the right path. You are infinitely supported by the source of life. You have access to all of the abundance angels, all of the ascended masters, the deities, whatever you want to call that. The oneness of existence is literally living and breathing through you. And that is who you are. So with that, I send you blessings for your amazing week. I'll see you again next week.